everyone, this video tutorial is for the Michael Traveler by OO Creations. As you can see, this is a really big bag, so you'll want to save about two to three days to make this bag, maybe cut and do all your interfacing and all your markings one day, spend the next two days sewing. Because it is a big bag, there's a lot of big pieces, it does take a lot of time. So definitely put that aside and don't try to rush through it. It is worth the time it takes to make this bag. So let's discuss some of the features. The first thing you'll notice is there's a lot of straps here. So you have this crossbody strap. I've just tightened it so you can see it on camera. Then you have the two handles. On the front of the bag is a cargo pocket with a flap. And the flap is held closed with a twist lock. I've also added this hardware on the bottom of the flap here. I really like how it looks. Adds a nice little bit of bling. On the back of the bag there is a luggage sleeve and as I mentioned when I was sewing the bag and I'm going to mention now as well, there is a hack that I have for making this luggage sleeve into a pocket. So it's a slip pocket but it has a magnetic snap at the top and all you're doing is sewing a zipper down here and adding a magnetic snap. So if you're using this bag when it's not being used on a luggage, you have this extra little pocket in the back and then you just unzip this zipper and you can hook it onto your luggage. So you still have your luggage sleeve but it doubles as a pocket as well. On the sides of the bags you have these really cute little pockets here on both sides so perfect you know if you want to stash some masks in there or some Kleenex hand sanitizer anything you want you can stash in these pockets they're nice and big so lots of room when we open the bag you'll notice the top has two zippers and it has this nice gusset and it's hard to see because my camera isn't wide enough but it has the gusset here so when you open these both the zippers open and this end of the gusset on this side is held closed with a magnetic snap. So when you open this, as you can see, it opens nice and wide. This is great for being able to get into the bag and see what's in your bag. So when you're looking inside the bag, you have a slip pocket on this side, and it's divided into three here. And then you have a slip pocket on the other side, and I just divided this one into two. I figured it's nice to have a couple of different options for some slip pockets. Then there is a zipper pocket. And on the side are these gathered pockets. And I'm trying to turn this so you can see where the light shows. So you've got these gather pockets here on both sides of the bag. And then there is this key strap, so perfect for your keys, especially when you're traveling and if you're not wanting to carry any other luggage but you just wanna have this, you can just strap your keys in there. They're safe, they're inside the bag, ready for you whenever you need them. And if you don't wanna use the key strap, you don't have to just tuck it back in and that's another thing if you don't want to add the key strap to your bag you don't have to add it it's totally optional another thing is, is if you don't like these side po pockets these gathered pockets here you don't have to add them if you don't want slip the extra slip pocket you don't have to add it or say you want to add another zipper pocket you can add another zipper pocket to the other side just use the same instructions for the first it's really your choice and you can really make this a little bit of a quicker sew by omitting some of the things if you don't want them say you don't even want these pockets on the side here on the exterior you really could just omit them and really make this your own with adding and taking away whatever you don't want. Another thing is, is if you don't want to use the shoulder or the crossbody strap, because with bags this size, I don't find I use the crossbody strap. So I usually don't add them. However, I was sewing the tutorial, so I really wanted to show you, oh, this is stuck. I wanted to show you how to sew it. So normally I wouldn't have, and I would have just omitted this and I wouldn't have had this. So that would have saved me some hardware as well. I would have saved some D-rings, some swivel hooks, and a slider I would have saved on hardware. So that's the bag. Again, plan to spend a few days sewing this because it really does take a lot of work. Another thing, when I filmed the tutorial, I filmed it like a sew along. So what that means is that I don't fast forward through any steps. Now there are some steps, for example, I sewed the handles off camera, so you didn't need to see them, but I did show you how to show, sew the strap. So I didn't have you sitting there watching me sew the two handles when you already saw me sew the strap. If there was things that I felt like you didn't need to see, for example, trimming seam allowances, I didn't do that on camera because that's pretty straightforward. So things like that that are fairly straightforward are things that I thought you didn't really need to see because I've already explained it and I didn't want to have to show you two times. Another example of that was sewing these strap anchors here. I showed you the first time and I, I really went through and I was very thorough and then I sewed the other three off camera. So I do sew this like a sew along. I don't fast forward through when I'm sewing. I don't fast forward through the parts where I'm pinning because I want you to see everything I'm doing. And the reason for that is 
For those that are new, I really want them to see every step of making the bag. And if you're an advanced or an intermediate sewist and you know what you're doing, you can simply fast forward through those parts or you can speed up the video so that you don't have to watch those parts at all. It's really your choice. This is a video for you to follow along with to make this bag. I do share lots of tips and tricks though during those times where I may be just sewing or I may be cutting. So if you fast forward, you may miss out on some really helpful tips and tricks and I give a lot of them when I'm sewing this bag, probably more than I've given in some of the other tutorials tutorials that I filmed. I really like giving some extra tips and tricks because I feel like it may help you with future bags or if you're new it may be things that you weren't sure you could do and you can see that you can do it. Things that help make sewing these bags easier. Just stuff like that because I really want to share all my knowledge with everybody and I really want to see everybody succeed and I want to see you all make these beautiful bags as well. So now that we've discussed all the features of the bag, let's get started on sewing our Michael Traveler. So the very first thing you'll want to do is read through the entire pattern. It's really important to read through the entire pattern before you get started, especially when you're cutting and fusing your interfacing, because some pieces have to be fused later. So you'll want to really make sure you read through the entire pattern. You'll want to open it in Adobe and print from Adobe at actual size. Once you have all your pattern pieces printed and cut and you've read through the entire pattern you can get to cutting out your fabric when i cut out my fabric i also because i have gone ahead and read i make some marks on the backs of the fabrics just so that when i get to those steps i don't have to make those marks when i get there and one of the most important marks that i make are marking all my centers so on the center of some of my pattern pieces and there are quite a bit of pattern pieces here so this one I'll show you. I do mark where the centers are and I also mark with my pencil. I use pencil. You can use whatever marking tool you want. I just use pencil because I haven't had any issues with pencil. And the one thing I like about pencil, not only that it's on the back of the fabric, I don't find I have any issues with it. But when you're pressing your fabric with your iron, the um, pencil won't disappear on you. So it stays there. So it's really nice because then you're not wondering what pattern piece it is if the iron accidentally hits it or moves it and then the other thing I also mark is a T for where the top is so I mark centers top and I also label it right on the back of the fabric what it is for that pattern piece so that when I get to that step I know what pattern piece to grab I've interfaced all my pattern pieces that need to be interfaced I've also gone ahead and pressed things like my key strap and my handles so I've gone ahead and done that and even though I've done that now I will show you when we get to those steps how to do this I just to help save time and me not have to go to my iron while we're recording and stopping. Another thing I have done is marked my zippers or cut them to length and then I've also marked with what they will be. So for the zipper pocket, top zipper, I've gone ahead and done that as well. Cut my elastic to length and I've got them here and I like to clip it together so that these don't get lost. I do have cats and if they see elastics, um, cats really like elastics, they find them really fun. She'll take off with them so I always clip them together so that they're in this here and it's easier to find. Sometimes I'll even clip it to my fabric making it easier to find. So once you have everything all cut, interfaced, all your markings made and you can also go ahead because you've read through and you can apply your stabilizer as I did here and my iron kind of was a little bit dirty on it so it kind of left a marking on my stabilizer. That's okay it's on the back of the fabric but you can go ahead and fuse stabilizer where these little stabilizer pieces are make all your marks. You can go ahead and do that all. You can attach your interfacing to your fabrics that need the interfacing. So once you've gone ahead and done that, we can get right to sewing. So let's get started. The very first thing you want to do, of course, is attach all your interfacing as per the instructions in the pattern. And there are some instructions given for cutting interfacing smaller, how to attach the interfacing. So definitely refer to that. And even though I've gone ahead and done some of those steps, there was one step that I wanted to show you how to do. I didn't want to do it before filming. So it was for these strap anchors. And they have an interfacing that you need to place on the back of the strap anchor. And it has the strap anchor interfacing. But but then we have to take these side curved edges, so the side here, and we have to press it in and we have to press this curve here. So you can see this here, this curve is going to be pressed back and then this curve is going to be pressed. So I'm going to show you how to do that and what you can use is a glue stick or some double sided tape. I'm going to use glue stick for this and first we need to clip some V's 
right in this curve here on this side. So if you're looking at the right side and you're looking, it kind of looks like a J sort of almost here. So you want to cut this curve right here. You want to notch some V's there. And you want to do that on all four pieces. For now, I'm only going to do one and then I'll do the other three off camera because once I show you one, I don't think you need to sit through and watch me sew the other ones. So cut the curve, cut the V's. Just like that. And this just helps it spread and lay nicer behind so that you don't get all the bulk there and it won't um, cause any issues on the front side as well. So once you have that, and by issues I mean pleats or anything, once you have that done, I like to place some glue along the sides just like that. So I placed glue, you can see the purple, and I'm just going to fold one side over. and stick it down. And then I'm going to fold the other side over and you can go ahead and place some more glue to help hold this down. I really like using glue sticks wherever I can because they are inexpensive and it saves you a bit of money because double-sided tape is not super cheap and we do use a lot of it for bag making so I like to use glue stick whenever I can. So now I'm at this curve where we cut those little slits, those little V's and I'm just taking and I'm pushing it down towards the glue and this is where your iron is going to be very helpful so once you have this all pressed you'll take it to your iron and you will iron these and what that'll do is that'll not only press this down for you but it'll also dry that glue so the glue sticks so this all sticks where you've pressed it so you've got the one side so you can see that curved edge is all pressed down you want to repeat that for the other side so the side here with this long edge so this edge here we're not doing anything with just yet you're just doing this edge this this edge here and this long curved edge. So this is the outside and this is the upper curve. So you're doing the upper curve and the outside curve. So some more glue down the curve. And you can place some snips on this side too if it helps you. And again the glue is not quite sticking as well because we haven't pressed it to dry it. If you don't want to use your iron to dry this, you'll want to put these off to the side with something heavy on top until they dry. I just like using my iron because it dries it really fast and it gets it really nice and flat for me as well. Presses it really good. And wherever you're finding you need a little bit more glue, just keep adding the glue. So what I do is I'm usually doing this part, I will do this right at my iron, I won't do this at my table and then as I add the glue I actually just take the iron and press it right away and that way there it's pressed, it's dry, nothing's lifting back up on me, I don't have to worry about that. So there's how it's going to look. So I did the upper curve and I did the outside curve only. I have left the top edge unpressed towards the back and this edge here. So I'm going to take this to my iron and I'm going to give it a press to get it all pressed down really nice. And again, I usually do this right at my ironing board. I just take it and I put a little bit of glue, then I dry that area, put a little bit of glue, dry that area, and I just keep as I'm going along. And that way there it makes sure everything stays pressed and nothing's lifting up at me, uh, up on me so I'm not fighting as I'm going. So you can do that with all the pieces. So again, outside, cur or outside curve is staying with no notches. Your upper curve here You'll notch little V's in it all the way through the curve, press them in, both those curves, in towards, so that it looks like this. And the back looks like that. So I'm going to take this to the iron, press it, I'm going to also repeat that for these ones, and then I will show you how they look once I've pressed it with my iron. So I'll go do that, and we'll come back. So here's how the strap anchors look once I have them all pressed. So you can see the outside edge here is pressed in, 
and the upper edge is pressed in. And just to note, when you're making these Vs, don't go right to the edge where your stabilizer is. Come up a little bit. And the reason for this is you don't want this to fray or be cut on the wrong side when you're folding it over because you can end up having a little mark here where it's folded over. So just be careful when you're pressing there, or when you're cutting, sorry, that you don't cut right to the edge of the stabilizer, just a little bit above the stabilizer so that you don't have it fray or start tearing on you. So that's how those all look when they are pressed. So once these are done, you can place these to the side. And I know this is part of the prep work for attaching interfacing, but I did want to show you how to do that just so that there was no confusion or anything. So that is how you do that. Moving on, we're going to construct our handles and strap. So here's our handles and our strap. Now I've already gone ahead and completed my handles. I folded them all and stitched them all together and that's how they look. I left the strap because the strap construction is the exact same as the handle construction. So I didn't feel that I needed to sew my handles on camera. It saves a little bit of time from you having to fast forward through watching me sew this. So for the strap and the handles, you will have a piece of fabric that is going to look like this and be long. So it'll be flat and long. The first thing you need to do is there is a marking or a measurement that you need to make from the short edge down. You'll want to refer to the pattern for that, what the marking is, and make that mark on both the ends of the strap and handle, so both the short ends. Once you have that mark made, you'll then fold the handle or the strap at that mark and you'll press it just like that. Once you have that pressed, You'll then take the handle or the strap and you'll fold it in half, long edges lining up, long raw edges meeting, so just like that. So you'll have one folded edge and one edge with two raw edges and you'll press it. Once you have that pressed, you'll open it back up and you'll fold those long raw edges in to meet the center, just like that. And you'll press it. Now a little tip. When I make my straps or my handles, I don't fold my material in to touch the center line when I'm folding this second fold here. So, you know, we folded it in half this way and then we opened it back up and we folded those long edges in to meet the center. I don't have it touching in the center. I leave a little bit of space between. And the reason for that is that avoids having any bulk here in this edge where the fold is. That way there you have no bulk. It doesn't have any like bulges or anything in the center because when you fold that naturally causes those two pieces to push down into that edge. So again, don't um, press it so that it goes directly into the center so that they touch. Have it so that there's a little bit of space between to give it that little bit of extra space so you don't get bulk. So that is how that will be done and you'll have it all pressed. So you'll have no raw edges, everything will be pressed and it'll look like that with no raw edges and you'll have it all clipped. If you're using a material that you can't press with your iron, so I do want to give you the instructions for that. If you have a material that you can't press with your iron, you'll follow all the same instructions. So press this edge down and to hold it down, you can use some double sided tape. So you press it down, use the double sided tape to hold it in place. Then when it comes to pressing these into the center, the long edges into the center, you'll draw a line down the entire length of the strap in the center of the strap, the entire length. Once you have that line drawn, you'll place double-sided tape on both sides of the center line. Remove one of the backings of the double-sided tape and press one long raw edge in to meet that center line. Once you have that one done, you'll repeat that same process for the second side. Remove the double-sided tape backing, press that in. And again, same trick I had said for the cotton. Don't press it right in to meet that center line, especially when you're using something like a cork, vinyl, uh, faux leather because they are a bit thicker than cotton and that will cause that bulk in that seam So that that just helps remove that bulk So press it so that there's a little bit of space It'll still make your strap the length or the width sorry that you need But you're just avoiding that bulk in that middle seam So once you have them both pressed in on both sides, you'll have a piece that looks like this You'll then fold it again so that you have a piece that looks like this and then you could just use clips the whole way down and then you will sew it. So once you have it all pinned or clipped, you're going to sew this using the seam allowance given in the pattern and you're going to sew all four edges. So you're gonna go across the short edge, down the long edge and across the other short edge. Now, if you're worried about twisting of your strap because sometimes when you're sewing, your strap, and I find
find this more when I'm using something like a vinyl or a cork or full leather. I find sometimes I get twisting, not always, but sometimes. Now to avoid that, what you can do is you can start stitching at this end, come all the way down and start a stop here, back stitch, break the stitches, then come back up. So you'll end up flipping your handle over or your strap, start back at the same end that you started at and go all the way down again and end here. That is how you prevent it from stitching because you're starting and stopping at the same end and that'll prevent that. Sometimes you get this like curve in your strap. However, I don't find I really get it with cotton and if I'm finding it is twisting a little bit, I just take my iron and I really find this works and I just press it with my iron. You can even use some steam. I don't use any steam. I just press, press, don't sh slide your iron, press it, leave it down for a bit, press it, leave it down for a bit, press it, leave it down for a bit. And then after that, then I just run my iron along it and I find that heat helps flatten it and I don't move the strap. I leave it on my ironing board until it's completely cooled off and I find with that pressing and then that ironing and then leaving it cool, that prevents it from twisting and I get really nice flat straps. And actually sometimes, even after I'm done top stitching, whether it's twisting or not, I'll still go and press it just because I find that it gives a really nice flat, nice pressed um, uh, strap or handle and it helps seal in those like press those stitches in so I, I do like doing that because it one nice final press that's just an extra step it's not something that you necessarily have to do it's just something I do it's a personal preference so again we're going to put this one to the side and we're going to stitch our strap here now I don't have my short raw edges pressed in the way I was explaining as Tara has in the pattern and the reason for that is I do my handles and my straps a little bit different and I have a tutorial on my YouTube channel I'll link it below in the description for getting clean edges on your straps and handles and you can stop this video you can go watch that tutorial and then come back or even watch it before you really start doing your handles and straps just so that you know what I'm doing it goes a little bit more into detail but what I do is I take my strap or my handle and then I fold it so that the pretty sides touch just like that. And then once the pretty sides are touching, I'll put a clip there, I will then sew starting from the folded edge over to the center. So you know where the center is because you've pressed it. So just to the center. And if you're worried that you're not going to remember where the center is, use a marking tool and make a mark. So I'll stitch using the seam allowance that was given for folding these edges down as well. So I'm using that same seam allowance so everything ends up being the same. And I'll stitch just to this middle point. Once I get to the middle point, back stitch, cut off my stitches. Then you'll have a piece, so I'll show you. So I'm going to stitch. So once you have a piece, it'll look like this. So you can see there's just some stitches there. I hope you can see it. I'm using rainbow thread. You can see it on this side. There's some stitches there. Once I have those stitches sewn, I then take my scissors and I'm going to cut this on an angle. And then I'm going to cut here and trim off the corner. And you'll have a piece once you trim it off that's going to look like this. And that's how this looks too once it's all cut. So I've cut it on an angle. And the reason why I'm cutting it on an angle is we're now going to take this and turn it so it is pretty sides out and I use my turning tool and I poke out that corner gently. Oops. Then you have a piece that looks like this. So you have one that's folded under and sewn and some edges here that are raw. I then take that edge that I've clipped and I fold it back right on that pressed edge just like that. And then I take the other end and fold it keeping it folded on that pressed edge as well as the pressed edge at the top and fold it under into the strap. And you may need to use your turning tool here to get it really flat in there and that's okay. So just like that and then I place the clip and it looks like that when it's done without the clip. And that's how I do my handles and strap. And again, I'll put a tutorial below, a link to that tutorial below so that you can easily find it to see more detail how I do this. But that's how I do my handles and straps. You can definitely do it the way Tara has shown in the pattern, or you can use this technique. Maybe it's a new technique or a technique you haven't seen before and you want to give it a try. You can definitely use that as well. Either way, it all results in the same look of the strap or handle when the bag is done. It doesn't change the look. So I'm just giving this a trim.
turning it out and then once I get that all turned out push it under fold it on the folded edge again on both sides on that pressed end because I've already pressed it making sure everything is nice and flat we'll tuck it under and into the seam clip it and then I'm going to top stitch all four edges just the way it was told in the pattern and you'll want to refer to the pattern for what that seam allowance is for top stitching of bobbin so I'm now going to go and replace my bobbin and then I'll come back and finish stitching this all right bobbin is changed and all I did was where I ran out of bobbin I back took out a few stitches back like I went back and took out a few stitches and then I pulled the thread tails through to one side and tied them off and that way there there's no um, chance of that coming unstitched when you go back to stitch this you can start right in the same hole leave long tails pull them through the back and tie them off or back stitch if you prefer if yours is a busier print material no one's going to really notice the back stitching i'm going to go ahead and back stitch here because again it's a busier print and it won't really get noticed so i'm going to top back stitch a little bit there and then just continue on however if i was using a material that wasn't as busy as this i would have pulled both the tails through and i would have tied them off just going to cut all my threads and where I back stitched up here I'm going to cut those threads as well and they blend nice so you can't even tell that that was ever back stitched there plus nobody will be really looking at your strap that much to see if you did back stitch but if I was using a material that was just a solid print and I was trying to use a contrasting thread I would definitely do leave long tails pull them through and tie them off and then you can even take a needle after so just any needle thread the threads through so come back through your material right where your stitches are and thread them through and then come up between the seam wherever your seam is so if it's on the side where the folds are or up here to pull the threads through and that'll help bury the extra tails and the knots a little bit as well so there it is your strap or your handles are completely constructed the next thing we need to do is add our hardware for the crossbody strap. And the hardware for the crossbody strap is going to be your two swivel hooks and a slider. First thing you'll want to do 
is slide your slider on. So here's my slider and I have a slider that has a movable bar and I really like these sliders because I let the bar drop to the bottom. Oops. I let the bar drop to the bottom, the middle bar. I put my strap through, then I lift that bar so that it's against that fabric, against my strap. And then I put my strap down through and this loops it over that middle bar. Just like that. So the middle bar is right there. Now there's a measurement in the pattern for far how how far ooh, how far over the middle bar it needs to go. So you'll want to refer to that. Then you'll sew this to hold it in place. And I'll go back and add rivets later. Rivets are optional. You don't have to add them, but I'll go back and add some rivets later to this. I won't do it on camera. I'll do it after. So you may notice later that there's some rivets on my strap. Um, that's just because I've added it and it's just a personal preference. So I'm just going to add two rivets before the video. I'm going to stitch this end in place. So I'm going to leave that like that. And like I said, I will add some rivets. However, you can then sew a little box. If you have no rivets, sew a little box. And then you can even sew an X inside that box just to help hold it in place and make sure that you know you have the extra security in there. So once that's folded over and you've stitched it across, and you can back stitch too a couple times just to really help hold it, but like I said, I'm gonna go back later, I'm going to add some rivets. You'll then take your strap, and I like to get it flat with my slider facing up. So you can see where the part is that I folded over is facing up as well. So my slider is facing up and I like to get my strap nice and flat. And then when it's flat, I then take my swivel hook and with the hook part against my table, I take my strap and feed it through the loop and back coming up towards my swivel hook. I will do the same thing. Push the bar against one side of the swivel hook feed the strap through, push the bar against the strap, the middle bar. If you don't have a middle bar, you're just going right over that middle bar and bring it down. And always test it to see if it's, if it's good. So what I do is I just take the two ends and I do that. And if it locks and it doesn't slide on me, you know you've installed your slider properly. Once you have that, flip it so the slider is now against the table. And you're going to do the same thing with your slider hook against the table, feed this through the ring over and fold it over. And again, there's a measurement in the pattern for how far you're going to fold it over. You'll want to refer to that. Once you have it folded over, you can stitch this in place across the stitching and you can go right on top of, go right on top of that top stitching that you did previously. Stitch this in place. just like that. And all I'm doing here is cutting all my thread. And then that is all stitched in place. You have your strap stitched with the swivel hooks all attached, just like that. So like I said, I'm gonna go back after and I'm going to punch some holes and attach some rivets. But you can also sew a little box if you want some extra security. Sew a little box here and sew an X in it. And that's if you don't have rivets. If you don't have rivets and you have Chicago screws, you can also use Chicago screws as well. So that's how that looks. I'm going to set this to the side for now. And we will move on to making our end strap anchors. And that will look like, I just need to get mine. I know they're clipped together somewhere here. They will look like this. You will have two of them. For this part, you're going to draw a line down the center and then you're going to press these into the center and I'm just going to finger press these just like that. And because we're not folding these in half again, you can make them touch right in the center. You don't need to leave a little space because we're not folding these. We're just folding it like that in towards the center and you're leaving it. There is no other folding happening. 
So it's just going to be like that and you'll have raw edges folded together on the back side. So I'm going to do that for this side and then I'm going to take it to my iron and I'm going to give it a really good press and we will come back and we will finish stitching our end strap anchor. So I press them into the center. If you're using a uh, material like cork, vinyl, full leather, something you can't press with an iron, you'll use double-sided tape just as you did for the handle and the straps and you'll place it on both sides of the line and just press it in to meet both sides of the line. Once we have that, we're going to top stitch both these long folded edges. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And all I'm doing here is just trimming all my threads. And I trim them just, I know it's at the ends here, but I have had them come back when a constructed bag and they end up showing on the ends of the constructed bag. So just to make sure that that doesn't happen, I just trim them. Once you have those top stitched, you're then going to take your D ring or triangle ring, whatever you've chosen to use the hardware for this step. And you're going to slide it so that it meets the center. And what you can do to make sure you're getting the center is fold these in half and press them with your fingers and then you know where the center is and you can just slide this right into that center crease. But all I do is just put the D-ring on, put the short edges together, the short raw edges, and I know that that D-ring is in the center. So clipped in place, and now we'll base those raw edges together. Clip all your threads. And then there is a measurement for where you're going to now sew under the hardware. So there's a measurement there. So you'll want to refer to the pattern for that measurement. I'm going to go ahead and stitch there. Trim all your threads. It's really important at this step to trim all your threads really well because this will be seen in the finished bag. And there we have it, both of them are done. Just like that, and they look like that. I'm going to take these and I'm going to hook them onto the end of my swivel hook just so I don't lose them because sometimes things get misplaced. So they're hooked onto here and I'm going to put this off to the side so we can now move on to the next step. Now we're going to work on constructing the exterior pieces. And for the first steps, we need the cargo pocket piece with the pocket cargo pocket foam first. So I took out both my pieces of my lining and my exterior, but the one we're working with right now is the one with the foam attached. We then need to get our lock that we're using. And you need the male piece. So it'll look like this. Yours may look a little bit different. 
if yours is different, not to worry. Install this as per your manufacturer's instructions. I always recommend following those as they will be exactly what you need to do. I also need my little washer. If there are screws, be careful not to lose any. You'll need those later. Now there is a measurement in the pattern that you need to refer to for where you are placing this. So you need to place it down from that mark. And you're going to place it down from the top and centered side to side. And then you will make your slits. So what I like to do is center it at that mark and find out where on my washer those slits are going to need to be made. So I found that mark. I'm going to mark with my pen where that is. Then I'm going to cut my slits. And if you're worried about accidentally slipping and cutting a little too much with your seam ripper, take a needle and you'll place it just above those marks that you made. So you'll just place it into your fabric like that, right above those marks. And what that does is when you're seam ripping, as soon as you get up to that needle, that stops. I can't go any further because this pin or needle is stopping me from going any further. And that just gives you an extra step of security to make sure you don't rip your fabric more than you need to. Now the other step I do is I add some fray stop. Yeah, I'm using fray stop. I thought it was fray check. Fray stop, fray check, any seam sealant on the slits I made and that'll just help prevent them from uh, fraying over time. Now we need to place the male prongs through those slits that we made just like that. Then I'm going to put the washer on and I'm going to fold my prongs. And I just have this pair of pliers that I use from the dollar store for grabbing the prongs. I just find it's easier for me. And it's easier when you're doing something else because this doesn't, you know, see how it shifts when I'm pressing on it, it doesn't stay flat against the table because it's got that little lock piece that sticks out. It's a little bit more tricky, but it's still doable. And then I'll just take it and press it against the table. Now, I like to take a piece of tape, so I use some duct tape, and I like to place it over my prongs. And the reason for this is this just prevents the prongs from rubbing through the material over time, or even this washer, because the washer can get pretty sharp, or can be pretty sharp. So I just like to cover it. Just like that. And you can also use interfacing there if you prefer, whatever you want. If you're doing this with a magnetic snap, so say this was a magnetic snap, you can't use a magnetic snap here because of the um, flap. But if this was a magnetic snap, you would do the same thing, but when you're pressing your interfacing, be careful not to touch the magnetic snap with your iron because you can demagnetize it. So that's how that'll look once that is installed. You'll have a little piece that sticks out of your exterior piece. Now we're going to take the two cargo pocket pieces, so your exterior and your lining, and place them together so the pretty sides are touching. And I'm lining up the sides and then I line up my center marks and I pin the rest of the way and this just ensures that everything lines up nicely for me. And when I'm sewing, I'm going to sew so that the lining is up and the exterior is down. That's just because that um, piece of the twist lock is there and it can get in the way. So if you have it like this, this just means that it'll be easier to sew because it's flat against the bed of your machine. So I'm going to stitch this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. And if you changed your stitch length for top stitching, change it back before you start stitching. Now we're 
we're going to sew the bottom edge. So pin this together again, lining up your center marks. And you're going to sew this as well with the seam allowance given in the pattern. And you could have did this right at the same time. I just like to do this separately sometimes. That way there it's, it's held my top in place. I, don't, I know my top isn't going to shift. The top is this piece here that we just sewed this straight edge. This is going to be your bottom edge. So now I'm going to sew this angled edge across the bottom and up across that angled edge as well. So you're going to sew this as well using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And again, I did my top edge first. I just find that helps hold it from this part shifting on me as I'm sewing. And when I get to a corner, I like to backstitch and that just helps reinforce that corner so that when we're poking it out, we don't accidentally poke right through the material. I just like the extra bit of security that the backstitching gives. There we go. Cutting my threads. And now we're going to turn this pocket right sides out through one of the edges. And then we will take this to our iron and we will give it a really good press. So I'm going to take this to my iron and press this all and then we'll come back and we will finish with top stitching the whole piece and pressing where we need to. Now that we have this pressed, we're now going to top stitch just this top straight edge. And be careful when you're around your twist lock piece that you don't accidentally hit it. It's pretty far down so you should be okay, but you never know. There we go, that's how it looks. Now you need to make some marks on your cargo pocket. So you'll wanna have it facing right side up and make those marks. You'll need to refer to the pattern for where those marks are made. Once you have those marks made, you're going to take the cargo pocket and the first fold the line the, the, on the sides, the linings are going to go right sides together. So the first mark away from the, pro, the this, this snap piece here for your twist lock, and you'll fold it at the line so the linings are touching. And right on that line, and I like to make sure my bottom and my top lines up and then I just keep folding all the way down. Then you're going to repeat that for the other side. So again, that first mark, the first line away from the prong of the um, twist lock, fold them so they're right, wrong sides together, so lining goes together, and again I'm pinning my tops and bottoms, I just like to do that first just to make sure that it doesn't, it lines up and it makes it nice and flat for me, so add all the clips all the way down, and then you have the second line that you drew. And you're going to take the second line and fold it so that the exteriors now touch. And this may mean you need to move a few of the clips out of the way. That's okay. Go ahead and move those few clips out of the way. And then press it so that the exteriors now match up. And again, I'm pressing the tops first. And I'm folding it just at that line I made. Pressing the top and the bottom all the way down and then you can add some clips here as well. Once you have that pressed or folded, you'll take this to your iron and give it all a really good press and you want to get a really good press so it creases well. So I'm going to go take this to my iron and I'm going to press everything and that'll mean this crease here, I'll end up removing these clips so that I can press this crease first or you can press it all together and use some steam, whatever works for you. So go ahead and do that and we'll come back and we'll continue on. So now that I have it all pressed, we're going to undo the back. So 
So you just want the first fold, so the linings, to be together right now. And we're going to top stitch this long edge on both sides. Make sure that when you're stitching one side, the other side's end of the cargo pocket is out of the way, and that second fold is unfolded. You're just stitching the first fold. So you'll use the seam allowance given in the pattern for this first fold. I'm going to go to the second one and I've pulled long tails I'll cut those off after now I'm going to cut all those threads to refold where we've pressed and you can use some clips to help hold the pocket in place for now on those folds just like that that's how your pocket looks now you need one of your exterior mains and that'll be a piece that looks like this which is attached to some foam and I've marked the top again and I marked that this is the main and there's a measurement you need to use for where to place this cargo pocket. So you'll want to refer to the pattern for where that measurement is. So you'll want to put that there at that measurement, the top of the cargo pocket at the top of that measurement. And you want this centered. So I'm lining up my centers. And once I have that lined up, I'm going to place a pin to hold it in place. And it's just a bit too much. Take your time with this. You want it all to line up nicely. And then I'm just pinning that. And then once I know my center at the bottom is all marked, lined up, I'm going to put a pin in the bottom and then pin it all the way along. I'm putting lots of pins. This is going to hold it in place so that nothing shifts on me while I'm sewing. And I'm even going to paste some pins through this fold here where the exterior is folded where we didn't top stitch. Oops, I just bent my pin a little bit. I'm leaving the clip there as well just to help hold everything in place. But I'm placing a pin there just so that when I get to that, it doesn't shift on me. So I want it to stay all lined up nicely and neatly. And the nice thing about the pin is I can hand crank over it. I can leave it in place and hand crank over these if I choose to. And then that just helps hold everything in place and make sure nothing shifts on me because I've kept the pins in and I'm hand cranking over them. I'm having a hard time with this pin. go. So now we're going to stitch the two sides, so down one side, stitch across this bottom, across this angled edge, and back up the other side. And when you start and stop, make sure to back stitch there so that your threads don't pull loose. So I'm going to top stitch, or stitch, sorry, using the seam allowance given in the pattern. This first 
first pin needs to be moved. And again, check your stitch length, make sure you're not using a top stitch length. Then you're going to pivot and top stitch across this bottom edge. And I'm approaching that pin that I said I would put in and because I can get halfway through that fold, I'm going to remove the pin and this clip. pin before I touch it. And then we're going to stitch up that side. all your clips and pins and trim your threads. I'm not worried about threads that are on the back side of the bag. You could trim them short but I'm not too worried about them because this is going to be on the inside of the bag. That's what the back looks like and that's the front. And you'll know that you have it right, the top edge is curved, so that's your top edge and that's why it's important to mark your top edge. So that's how the pocket looks so far, you have your nice little cargo pocket. Moving along, we now need our two cargo pocket flat pieces. And one has foam basted to it, so here is my one that has foam. And there are some markings that you need to make on the exterior side. So you'll want to go ahead and refer to the pattern for the markings. And that marking is for the remaining half of this twist lock here, and that's where we're going to install it. So once you have that marking made, you will then take the two, and by the way, I just used my pencil and made a dot because to install this twist lock, there's going to be a hole, so I know that's going to go away. I didn't want to use a pen that is a removable marking pen because once I press this all, once we have it all sewn, that's going to disappear on me. So I just used a pencil and made a little dot. If you're not comfortable using a pencil, you can go ahead and use whatever tool you use, but I figure once I'm centering this, I'm cutting out that little dot I just made. Moving on, we now take the two flaps and place them pretty sides touching, clip it all around, and we're going to sew the side along this bottom curved edge around up and back up the other side. And we're going to sew this using the seam allowance given in the pattern. Just like that. So now we're going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Don't forget to back stitch at start and stop. And if you have your stitch length changed, don't forget to change it back to your regular length you use for stitching. So that's how it looks when it's stitched. Now I'm going to trim the foam away from the seam allowance. So I'm using some duckbill scissors and I glued my foam. I used so I don't have a fusible foam and if I don't have basting spray I use a glue stick to glue it in and I just place the glue on the edges of the foam and then I dry it with my iron and that helps hold it in place so I don't have to use basting stitches to hold the foam in place. But you can also use double sided tape or as I mentioned a basting spray or base stitch it together. And that's what I did on the pieces for my exterior and my ends. I base stitched it. But for this one I knew it had to be trimmed away so I didn't want to base those edges because it would be hard to trim the foam out of the seam allowance when I'm trying to cut it if it's been sewn in. 
So once you have that trimmed, you'll then notch your curves. And you can use pinking shears for this. If you don't have pinking shears, you'll just notch little V's in the curves. Just like that. So it'll be all notched. And then we're going to turn this right sides out. And I like to take a little turning tool and I like to run it along the seams just to help push. And I do this for everything that I turned right side out. It just pushes out those seams and I can help get it really nice and flat when I take it over to my iron to give it a press. So I'm just pushing out those seams. So I'm going to take this over to my iron and I'm going to give this a really good press and then we'll come back and continue on with top stitching and installing this other half of our um, magnetic snap. I'm uh, not magnetic snap, sorry, twist lock. I keep thinking magnetic snap. That's why I keep stopping when I'm going to say what I'm saying because I keep forgetting twist lock. I got to keep telling myself twist lock, twist lock. So I'm going to go press this and we'll come back and continue on. So there it is, it's all pressed. Now we're going to top stitch. And before I top stitch, I'm just going to put some clips along this top edge just to make sure it doesn't shift on me. I want it to stay all lined up. And you'll notice I have some threads here too that are kind of coming off the top that are from fraying from the fabric. I'll trim those after before we sew this to the bag. I'll give these a good trim, like a little haircut, just to get rid of them. So I'm going to adjust my stitch length to my top stitch length and I'm going to stitch around all the sides and then I'm going to base the top edge closed. And if you're not sure how to get around the curves, what you can do, and I'll just stop here, is take a stitch, lift up your presser foot, take another stitch, lift up your presser foot, take another stitch, and keep doing that all the way around. Make sure your needle is in the material, is down. So down in the material before you lift up your presser foot. So that's what I do to help get around the curves. Another thing you can do is also draw the seam allowance, seam allowance around the curves. That way there you just stitch right on top of the seam allowance and you don't have to worry about not having an accurate seam allowance. So that's how it looks top stitched. Now I'm going to stitch that top edge together and I'm just leaving it at my top stitch length because I'm just basting this. And now time to give it a little haircut. And your fabric may be doing this too. If it is, go ahead and give yours a little haircut too. And make sure to clip all your threads as well in the process of giving this a nice little haircut. There we go. And that way there, when I'm stitching this to the bag, those little threads that have come loose won't uh, poke through anything. If you're really wanting to, you can add some seam sealant here at the top edge. That'll help really lock everything in. So that's how that looks. Now, there is a measure, or we need to grab, sorry, we need to grab our exterior main that has the cargo pocket that we attached in the previous steps. So we need to take this one. And there is a mark that you need to make from the top edge down, from the top edge down, for where we're going to place this flap. So you'll want to refer to the pattern and make that mark. Once you have that mark made, you're going to place the constructed flap centered at that mark with the raw edge at the top of the line. So the raw edge of the flap at the top of the line. And to find the, the center of my flap, I just fold it in half and I finger press this bottom edge here. And that top edge, the bottom raw edge of the flap will be on the top edge of the line you drew. And you'll want to use some pins to help hold this in place.
So it'll be just like that. Now we're going to stitch across this raw edge here using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And you can do what I used to do or what I will do, so I'll go off camera, and draw that seam allowance just because you can't see the bed of your machine and where your markings are. So this just means that you'll have a nice accurate seam allowance. And I just really like to be accurate because this flap will then get folded over. So I just like to have really accurate seam for this part. So I'm gonna go draw my seam allowance. And once I have that seam allowance drawn, I'm then going to stitch right on top of that line that I drew. So I'm gonna go do that and come back. So I've drawn that line for that seam allowance. Now I'm going to stitch directly on top of that line. And I'm changing my stitch length back to my usual stitch length that I use for stitching. Make sure you back stitch at start and stop. And because I can see the line, I can actually keep this lined up. I removed my pins. I can see the line I drew originally when I was putting this on this panel. Just like that. Trim any threads. And now what you need to do is fold the cargo pocket flap down. And we're just checking to see if that mark we made lines up with the prong here of the twist lock. And there should be a bit of um, a bulge here. It won't be flat. It'll have a little bit of a bulge. And mine does line up so I know that that is where my mark is. is. That's where I need to place my uh, female part of my cargo pocket. Or for the uh, twist lock, sorry, cargo pocket. Twist lock. So I'm going to grab my twist lock. And another trick you can do is put this on the back side of your, the back piece, the piece that will be on the, the back or the front, whatever piece you want. So maybe I'll do it with, oops, this front piece. And you can actually place that on the um, male part and then bring it up, fold your flap and bring it up and that'll create a little crease or dent if you just press it in place. That creates a little dent of where you need to cut. So you'll know if you've lined it up right. That's just a little trick. That's just something I do. It's not necessary, but it's just something I do. So keeping that flat. And just like that. And that's where I can see if my hole lines up or the mark I made lines up. And I'm also pressing it too so that I can see where those so I'm just going to mark with my pencil. I can see where the screw holes are as well for the screws for this piece. And I can still see where that oval is just right there. Another tip, color in with your pen that's an erasable marking pen and color on top of that prong and then push it down and that'll make a mark. So now that I have that there, I'm going to trim away the fabric and I'm also going to trim over where these little lock, the little screw parts are as well because you don't need that there and you want the screws to go through. So with my seam ripper, I'm going to make a rip just to get it started. And this part, I like to take my time, I don't rush it just because this is on the front of the bag. Don't rush this part, take your time, go really slow, it's worth it. And you're just cutting away all that material from that center. And I'm going over to where the, the holes are for the screws. Just like that. I'm going to add some seam sealant. But first what I'll do is I'll take my twist lock and I'll put it to see if that will cover, if that will have a big enough hole there. And if it's not, I know I need to trim away a little bit, but it's good. 
So some seam sealant here. This just fray stop prevents it from fraying on me. There we go. Now we're going to install that female part of the twist lock. Oops. So to do that, you need to take the exterior piece or the piece that's going to be on the right side of your material and place it within that hole. And there you go, I can see that it works. You're going to place it in that hole. What I like to do, and this is just a personal preference, is add a little bit of glue. And this is just in case over time the twist locks fall out, uh, the, the um, sorry, screws fall out. This just ensures that this will hold. I'm just placing a little glue. And then I'm placing this within that hole, just like that. And I'm going to leave that on the table for now. I've got glue all over my fingers. I feel like when I was in kindergarten and you'd play with that, I don't know if they have the same glue where you are, but it was like glue and it had a little red knob on the end, nubby on the end, and it was slanted and it would get glue all over. That's how I feel like I'm playing with when I use this glue. So. My glue is bubbling out, so I'm just going to get the tip clean. Now I'm going to place some glue on the other side. There we go again with the glue all over my fingers. Some glue on the other side, and you don't want to put a lot, just enough that it just spreads on the other half of this block. Then you're going to place this so it lines up with the screw holes push it together and this glue I like I said I just find it's it helps hold it together holds the fabric together as well holds everything together and that way there if those screws ever fall out over time you don't have to worry about it and speaking of the screws the other thing I like to do is place some glue in the screw holes and that just also helps ensure that those screws stay in place get the screw to come off my finger and stay in place. And if there's glue on your hardware, it wipes off, or at least I find it does. I'm just going to wipe the glue off. It kind of just rolls off like it does on your fingers. I do this while it's still wet so it's easier to, to do. It just rolls as it's wet and it comes right off and then you have no glue on your hardware whatsoever. And if it does, I just give it a little rub with my finger or my fingernail to get it off if it has dried. And then you can close up your twist lock. So that's how it looks right now with the female portion of the twist lock attached to the flap. Now we need to stitch this down. So with the cargo flap closed, lock it in place and it'll bulge a little bit that's good you want that to do that so that allows for some room in the pocket here we're going to top stitch this top folded edge of the cargo pocket flap sorry it's upside down we're going to top stitch this top edge using the seam allowance she gives in the pattern and because you again don't see the lines on your um, bed of your machine you can do the same thing we did previously which is draw that line so I'm going to go do that so that I can have a nice accurate seam allowance here so I'm going to go draw that line and come back and we will continue on with top stitching all right so I've drawn that seam now I'm going to stitch directly on top of that seam that I've made that line back stitching at start and stop And 
this seam here that we just stitched, this actually covers up that raw edge of the flap when we first stitched it. So you're covering up, you're folding in that raw edge without actually having to fold anything down and under and tucking anything in. So that's how that looks once it's all stitched. You have a nice little cargo pocket. And this will dry. Right now the glue is wet, so if you cut your hole too big, yours may shift. Mine is good. Mine's perfect. It didn't. It's not shifting. I didn't cut my hole too big. But if you did accidentally cut your hole too big, that's why I say go slow. Start with a smaller hole and keep checking and measuring. But if you accidentally did and it's a little bit too big, you'll find that the glue will help once it's dry. It'll help hold it in place and nothing will shift on you. We're going to put this to the side and move on to our luggage sleeve. And I'm just trying to find my luggage sleeve. Here it is. This is our luggage sleeve. What you want to do is take the luggage sleeve and fold it in half. So we're folding it in half. So the long raw edges meet and it's pretty sides touching right now. And you're going to sew. So I'm going to change my stitch length back. You're going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. we're going to turn this right sides out and give it a press so I'm going to go and give this a press and come back and we will continue with stitching our luggage sleeve all right so we have our luggage sleeve all pressed now we're going to top stitch the top and bottom edges and I have a hack for turning this into a zipper pocket that you can still use as a luggage sleeve and what you do, or a slip pocket, sorry, and what you do is you add a zipper to the bottom and a magnetic snap so it keeps it sort of like a slip pocket but you have a little magnetic snap that holds it closed. I have instructions for that, it's a little hack if you want to use that, say you're somebody who doesn't often travel or you're making this for say a craft fair to sell at a craft fair and you're not sure if somebody's going to want to use a luggage sleeve, you can make it into a pocket and then it doubles as a pocket and a luggage sleeve because all they do is unzip that and it can hook over the handle of their luggage. So I'll link that in the description below if you want to go ahead and give that a try and change this into a magnetic slip pocket for the luggage sleeve. So we're going to top stitch those top and bottom edges. threads all over my lap right now from everything I've trimmed. Now we're going to take the remaining exterior main that has nothing attached to it and we're going to place the luggage sleeve on top centered and there's a mark in the pattern down from the top that you need to make so you'll want to refer to the pattern and that's where the luggage sleeve is being placed. So fold the luggage sleeve in half And then you're going to line it up centrally. Just like that. Now we'll take some pins and I'll clip it in place, or pin it in place, sorry, just to hold it while I sew, because we're going to sew the short edges, just the two short edges. a pin poking through somewhere it stabbed me there we go so now we're going to show so these two short edges the two sides
threads, any that are poking up, any of the fraying, if your material frayed a little bit, you can go ahead and trim that off. There we go. That's how your luggage sleeve will look right now. Now we need to take a strap anchor and place it and place it so it is right side up. Sorry, I need to move that out of the way. I'll put this over here. We need to take a strap anchor and place it right side up. There are some measurements on the strap anchor that you need to make and you'll do that on all four. So you'll want to refer to the pattern. And the first marking that you're making, you're going to sew or top stitch, sorry, down to that mark on both sides on all four strap anchors. So starting at the top, top stitch down to that line you just made. So I'm going to go do that. Top stitch all my strap anchors at that line. Now, when you get down to this line, leave long tails. We're going to pull them through and tie them off. Stop at that mark, leave long tails. So you can back stitch at the top, but when you get to the bottom here, stop and leave long tails. So lift up your needle, long tails, just like that. And I'm going to repeat that on all of them and then we'll tie them off. So there's no back stitching. You're just leaving the long tails at that mark. The only place you can back stitch is up here at this top raw edge. So I need to leave long tails. So I'm going to just leave long tails each time. So at the top and the bottom. and you're just going to keep going, same method. There we go. Now we need to take all our tails and pull them through to the back. And in order to do that, you need your seam ripper or any other material or it's instrument that you can use. And what I like to do is pull the back thread and that creates a little loop here from the front thread pulling up and I just pull it through. So pull the back thread, there's a little loop, pull it through. And just be careful if you are using your seam ripper, you don't want to accidentally cut those threads. Now you're just going to knot them and you're going to do this for all the strap anchors. So you're just going to tie a knot and knot all the strap anchors or all the threads, sorry. And I have threads at the top here that don't need to be pulled to the back and tied off, so I'm just going to cut them because I've backstitched at the top there. So that's how those threads look. And one thing you can do right now is tie them off. So you can take them and you can, not tie them off, cut them. Or what I like to do for this, this here um, pattern is I like to take them and I'm going to tape them to the center here. And I'm just going to add some tape and tape them onto the center.
Now you can also tie these two together, so tie both sides together. This is just a little extra step I do. Don't tie it tight because you don't want to pull those the sides in towards each other. You want it to still stay flat, so don't tie it tight. Just tie it just so that they're tied together in the center. My hands are not happy right now. They're not wanting to cooperate with me. Just like that. So they're tied. So nothing will shift on you over time. And then I like to take some tape I just got to find my tape scissors. There they are. And I will tape the threads down in the center of this strap anchor. Just make sure that none of the tape is sticking out the sides. So you may need to trim it. because you don't want to see any tape later in your finished bag. And that's how it looks. So I've just tied them in the center here and then I've pulled them down and I've just left them long. And I just, it just, for me, it feels like there's a little bit of extra security because then the little threads are going to be poking out the sides there. So that's what you'll do for all of them. So I'm going to pause the camera. I'm going to go finish all my strap anchors and come back and we will continue on. There's all my strap anchors and I did what I said on all of them, which was tie it in the center here and then pull it down and add some tape. You can just simply clip your threads after you tie it off. It's totally your choice. That's just a little extra thing I do. I just feel like then my little threads that I've clipped don't come out or my knots don't come untied. Or you could just even do what I did, which is pull it to the center, tie it, and then clip your threads. So now you need to take your strap anchors, again, right side up, and there's a mark that you need to make from the top down. And once you have that mark made, so refer to the pattern for the measurement, you're then going to take your rectangle rings and you're going to put them at that mark and fold the strap anchor over. So I have my mark made and I'm folding my strap anchor over at that mark. And another little thing I like to do with my hardware is there is a little seam here where the hardware is joined. I like to have that tucked in between the fabric so you don't see it in the finished bag. So again, at that mark, put the hardware at that mark, fold it over, clip it in place. At that mark, fold it over, clip it in place. And I'm going to show you something that I like to do as well. So double-sided tape, truly one of my favorite notions. I use it a lot. I like to place some double-sided tape, if I can find where it is, on the strap anchor. And I'm going to look where that mark is and I'm just going to place it below and inside just past my stitching so below the mark and just either right on top of the stitching but not right along the edge of the strap anchor because you don't want this tape to show later even though it's washable you don't want it to, sh to show because you may not be washing this bag you may be giving it as a gift or selling it so there we go I have the tape on both sides Bring the rectangle ring to that mark and fold this over at that mark. Oops. The tape is sticking to my rectangle, to my fingers and my rectangle ring. And all the tape is going to do is going to help hold this in place when you sew so you don't have to worry about keeping clips on it while you're sewing and once you have this pinned to the bag. So I'm going to repeat that for the other ones. I'm just going to open these up one side at a time, add the tape, And again, this is just so that it's easier when I'm sewing. I don't have to worry about having my clips in the way. 
I can just simply remove these clips and place this down where it goes and I don't have clips that I'm trying to shift out of the way or sew around. I leave the clips though just to help keep it, keep it clipped together for now because sometimes the tape does lose its sticky power as I like to call it. So I still use the clips to help keep it clipped in place until I have this placed on my bag where it needs to go. This is a bit of time, takes a bit of time, but I find it's worth it to make sure that I have a nice finished bag in the end. strap anchors are clipped and pinned where it needs to go. Now we need to grab one of our exterior mains and place it right side up. So we have both of these. Now before we continue I wanted to show you something. There's this little piece of hardware that is perfect for the, bo oops, the bottom edge of your flap here and it fits right in that channel. I just have to get it in there. Maybe I should remove this. This fits right in that channel. And it may take a bit of work, but it does go and fit right in. Just like that. Once you have that in there, you can then screw that in place. But before I screw it in place, again, with the glue, I like to place some glue inside that channel. So there's a little channel here. I like to place some glue. And that just helps hold it in place in case you ever lose any of the screws or anything over time. There's just a little bit of glue that just helps hold it. And this glue really does hold. I've glued things and tried to pull it apart. It really does. And it's just Beacon 3-in-1. I've gotten these at my local fabric store, big box fabric store, my quilt shop, and I think even Amazon sells it. If I remember correctly, I have purchased it from Amazon in the past. And if you have Amazon Prime, I think it could be one day shipping, depending on where you are, of course. So just make sure this is centered. Get it pushed on just like that. And this is not part of the pattern, this is just a little extra that I wanted to show because I do think it, it adds a little extra touch of bling, it's really pretty. Then you have your screws. And you will screw this in and just make sure it's pushed up so that it's right in the channel. And it may be hard but you can do it, don't give up. And now I'm just going to screw these little screws in. And you can add some glue there to help hold the screws. For this I'm not, because these screws have those sharp little edges, like it's a pointed tip. And there's no other hole that it's going into. And I just go as tight as I can go. When I'm giving this to family members or friends, I always tell them, just every once in a while, check the little screws, wherever they're screws. Um, if it's a family member and it's a bag that they're using often, and I know they're using it a lot, there's going to be some wear and tear, I'll just check it myself if I have to. So for example, if my daughter has anything like this, every once in a while I'll just check it and make sure. But 
you don't have to if you have the screws in there and you use glue you don't have to especially if you're selling the bag you don't have to worry about that the glue does really truly hold it all in place and I'm just really making sure these screws are pushed all the way in there we go and see look how pretty that looks I like it it's just a nice little bit of bling on the front of the bag so back to the strap anchors we need one of these exterior mains so I'm just going to go with this one here that we just attached that to another thing if you have a, lo a logo a bag logo like this is handmade or anything that you want to add now is the time to add it before you or before we construct the final part of the bag go ahead and add them to your front or to wherever you want to go ahead and add that wherever you want just keep in mind your seam allowances on the top and the sides and the bottom if depending on where you're adding it you could have also added it to your cargo pocket here in the center but you would have had to do that before you sewed the cargo pocket together back to what we were doing you need to take one of your mirroring strap anchor sets so they would be mirrored and there's a mark that you would have made for where your strap anchor will go and I made that if you haven't go ahead and make that so there's mine so you'll see S for strap anchor C for final construction so I've made the marks on the back side so I'm lining up the top of my strap anchor with that line so the top of the strap anchor where that curve is with that line that I made and I'm going to pin it all the way down the side and the raw edges here as you'll notice are aligning with the side raw edges of the main panel now I'm going to add some pins to help hold this along the sides and the edges and the tops here just to help hold it in place while I sew because we're going to top stitch these down And I'm only going to do this with one side at a time just so that nothing shifts on me while I'm sewing. So remember I use double sided tape here so I can go ahead and remove that pin or the clip that was holding that in place. Oh, I can't get this pin through. worth your time to place a lot of pins or place enough pins so that nothing shifts on you you really want to make sure nothing shifts out nothing shifts be careful not to poke yourself I've poked myself numbers numerous times I made a bag this bag before I made this video tutorial and just to see how construction was and I, I must have poked myself a zillion times um, when I was pinning just this part here I kept poking myself and then at one point my finger was bleeding and thankfully it's a busier print and you don't notice it. I will show you that bag later, but thankfully you do not notice it. So once you have their strap anchor pinned, we need to now sew this in place. And to sew this in place, you're going to sew, you can start wherever you want. You can sew up the raw edge across this curve. And when you get to where we made that stitching, that was that first line of stitching when we top stitched before we added the rectangle ring, you're going to stop at that, sew across, then you're going to reinforce this by sewing back across and back again. So back stitching back and back again. Then come all the way down and stop here, back stitch. And then we will do that for the remaining three. So again, you're just going to pin it in place, aligning it with that strap anchor marking that you made and then pinning it and then sewing all the way around. And don't forget when you're pinning and you're sewing, I mean, that you stop where this top stitching is. If you have rivets, you can add rivets. There is measurement for rivets. So I'm going to stitch this in place now so you can see how it looks. I'm going to add rivets. However, I will do that off camera because not everybody has rivets and it's not as fun to watch that being installed. Just be careful as you're sewing, you're not going to hit your pins or anything and you don't poke your fingers as well. 
So just take your time while you're sewing this, like that, I just poked myself. And again, when you're coming around the curves, you can lift your presser foot up. I just like to go as slow as I can around the curve. And then see, I'm coming to a curve that's more of a sharp curve here. So I did need to help by lifting my presser foot. I mean, lifting my uh, presser foot, yes, with the needle down. So now I'm back where that top stitching started and I'm stopping right in that hole, that same hole I'm stopping in. I'm going to stitch straight across. Stopping right on the other side, then back stitch. And here I go a little bit slower so that I can really see what I'm doing. And then back across. And then back down the other side. So follow that curve. Oops, that pin's stuck there. Follow that curve. Don't rush it. Take your time. I promise it's worth it. Especially if you're not very familiar with sewing curves or you're nervous with sewing curves. Easy to do, just take your time. You can also do the same thing I had mentioned before, which was draw your seam allowance and just stitch right on that seam allowance line that you drew. And that's how it looks. So you'll notice it covered the raw edge on the one side of the cargo pocket here. That's how it looks with it covered. You can feel the cargo pocket where the raw edge is underneath. And that's how you know you have that also placed right. And I have it right. If you look, my stitching on the back side is right where that line is as well. Well, just below that line a little bit, which would be my top stitching seam allowance. And I just took my time and I followed along. So now you'll want to repeat that for the remaining three. So I'm going to go off camera because I just showed you how to do that and I don't feel like you need to really sit and watch me do the remaining three, but I'll come back and I'll show you how it looks when it is all complete. So here's how your main panels look with your strap anchors attached. I've also gone ahead and attached some rivets. So I did that off camera. I figured that I didn't really need to show because not everybody has rivets. However, if you don't have rivets, again, this back stitching here can act as a extra bit of security. You could even stitch where those rivets are, add another line of stitching here between your top stitching if you want for some more extra security. If you prefer, that's just an option, but it'll give it a little bit more strength there. So that's how that looks with those all attached and I also attached the rivets to my strap while we were off camera. Now you need your bottom panel or your base sorry and there are some measurements in the pattern for markings that you need to make on the exterior back side so you'll want to refer to the pattern for that for the markings. I've gone ahead and made the markings and these markings are for your purse feet. Now if you're not adding purse feet you'll simply just skip this step and move on but for the tutorial, I am adding purse feet. So you need to take your purse feet and get them all opened. You'll need your seam ripper and some fray stop or fray check. And what you're gonna do first is place your big, big feet, one of the washers, at those marks you made. And you're gonna make marks for where the slits are so you know where to cut. And you'll do that at all the marks. And there's six of them. And there's no right or wrong way to do this. Some people like to place it so the ones in the corners go on an angle. Some like to place it so that they go this way. Really, the choice is yours. Then you'll rip those holes. And remember, you're going through a few layers because you have 
a layer of woven interfacing, then a heavy interfacing, and then the foam. So it might be a little bit more difficult to get through, but you can do it. And again, if you're worried about pushing too far, pushing too hard, just use a pin there to stop you from pushing too far. <clears throat> and normally I would have put a piece of Peltex or Decoville Heavy or some heavyweight stabilizer behind the, the purse feet. However, there's already a heavyweight stabilizer in between the foam and the um, exterior fabric. So I'm not super concerned about it because there is that there. Now I'm going to find where all my slits are, which can be a little bit difficult. So I'm just feeling with my finger on the back side because I can feel it where they are. And I'm just putting the fray stop there. Now I'm going to take my first seat and knock everything over out of my bin. So I'm going to take my purse feet and I'm going to pull the prongs apart and then push them through the slits I made. Then my washer. And I like to fold my purse, prong, purse feet prongs in towards the center. You can fold them out if you prefer, but I just like to do that. I just find it hugs it. It hugs the material. And I've had um, purse feet actually come out when I folded them out before. It was really weird that one of the purse feet fell out. So I've stopped since that's happened and I started folding them in this way. And this way I find nothing comes out. Everything stays where it should. And again, I'm just using these pliers. I got these from the dollar store and I'm just using these to help push over the prongs. You can also add some glue inside to your purse feet here in the little bucket part, just in case if you're worried about the purse feet coming off the prongs. bag like this I like having the purse feet because you will be putting it down on a floor at a certain point so I like having the purse feet or if you're going to use it on top of your luggage even there having the purse feet they're just handy it helps keep the bottom of the bag clean off the ground And then once I have all the purse feet installed, I'm then going to take my duct tape and place them over the prongs. Same thing I did with the, uh, what was it that we installed on there? Um, thought I did, oh, with the prongs on the uh, twist block. Last purse foot. All right, and now time for the tape.
this is again just a little extra step you don't have to do this if you choose not to it's not something that's important if you don't feel it is I just like it for the extra security So now you have your purse feet all installed, just like that. Now we're going to take one of our exterior mains and we're going to lay it right side up and we're going to take the base and lay it so it's pretty sides touching the exterior main and we're going to align these bottom edges and I'm going to clip the corners first and then I'm going to clip where my center marks are. And this just helps ensure, oh that clip's going to break. This just helps ensure that everything lines up. Everything will be nice and centered. Oops. And then we will sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. my foam, I can't find my seam ripper, I basted my foam to my panels. I need to unpick those basting stitches. So I'm just putting my seam ripper in and I'm just going to seam rip those stitches all along this edge. I can't get my seam ripper started. There we go. And if you did the same thing, you can just do this as well, the same thing I'm doing. Just be careful you're not tearing any fabric. Just like that. On the other side because we want to remove the foam from the seam allowance just the foam I shouldn't be doing this going towards me it's very dangerous getting it started is a little bit tricky. So now I'm going to take my duckbill scissors and trim the foam. And I'm just trimming the foam, nothing else.
And now we're going to press this seam down towards the base. So you're going to take this to your iron and press this seam down towards the base. So I'm going to go do that and then we'll come back and continue on with constructing our exterior. Now we're going to top stitch along this seam of the base here, keeping our exterior out of the way. So I'm just going to roll it up so that I can get it under through the arm of my machine here and top stitch all the way across. Just check every once in a while to make sure that seam is staying flat behind for you. There we go. Now we're going to repeat that for the remaining exterior main and the opposite end of the base. So again, clip the sides and then the center. And then we will sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Then we'll take it to our iron and press, well, then we'll remove the foam from the seam allowance, then we'll take it to our iron and press it. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. going to pause the video while I do this and then when I come back it'll all be pressed and we will be able to top stitch and move on. So I've trimmed the foam, I've pressed the seam allowance towards the base, now I'm going to top stitch that seam. And you have a pretty big panel right now all pieced together so it might be a little bit harder to maneuver it. Just take your time if you're having a hard time with all the extra bulk here that's going to go underneath your machine. Roll up that exterior panel to make it easier to control it going underneath the arm of your machine. And there you go. That is how it looks. Now, there is an option that you can oops, attach your handles now. I just knocked it down. I don't want to roll over it. That you can attach your handles now if you are worried about maneuvering your bag under your machine when the handles are attached to stitch them. So you can actually attach them now and stitch them in place. That way there you're not having to maneuver a big bag under your machine. So if you're worried about that, you can do that now, attach your handles, and the instructions are near the end of the pattern for how you're going to attach these. I'm going to leave mine and attach them after because I'm going to be attaching them with rivets as well. So I'm going to leave them for now and attach them at the end. We're done with this panel for now. So we're calling it the one big panel. It's the main, the constructed main. We're done with this for now. I'm going to take mine and move it off to the side. So now we need our end pocket pieces. So you need all your lining ones and your exteriors. And it's really nice because you're starting to see the end of this little pile going down slowly but surely it's all going down. So you have four pieces right now. You have an ex two exterior ends and two lining ends. So you're going to place the exterior end right side up. These are the end pocket and the lining right side down or pretty sides touching. Line everything up. And I'll repeat this for the second set. My 
the chair is squeaky. <clears throat> Now we're going to sew this top edge using the seam allowance given in the pattern. Make sure if you've changed to a top stitch length, you change your stitching back. And when I get to where that center is, I pivot my material. I stop with my needle down and pivot my material so that I can keep with this angle of the pocket. And you know where to stop because you'll have your center mark marked on the fabric. Now we need to place a, whoops, place a snip into the middle seam here. So right in the middle so that this V can press out nicely. So go right down, but don't cut into your stitches. You just press just a little snip so that it opens up so that when we flip this so that it is right sides together, that'll help that V stay shaped. Now what I also like to do is take my iron and press this seam open because now we're going to go press it. So I'm going to take this to my iron. I'm going to press this seam open first. Then I'm going to flip it and press everything else, paying special attention to this area where that V is. So I'm going to go do that and come back and we will continue on. Now that I have it pressed, as you'll notice, I'm going to flip this so you can see it more. You'll see that I kept the V and that's because we made that snip and then I paid special attention when I was pressing to make sure that I had that V nice. So I'm just going to put some clips around because now we're going to top stitch the top edge and then we're going to baste these layers together. So I want to make sure nothing shifts on me. And I'm going to show you a little trick to make sure nothing shifts on you when you're top stitching or basting, sorry, these layers together. So what I do is I start in the middle and I work my way up or come down and stop in the middle. And then you do that on the other side. And this prevents it from shifting because sometimes when you're sewing, sewing, sewing and you come over here, it ends up shifting it and you get the fabric that bulges up up here. So you want to avoid that. And that is how you avoid it is by stitching it that way. So first I'm going to top stitch. Oh, this is not pressed very well. There we go. So first I'm going to top stitch. And I'm going to leave my stitch length at my top stitch length when I go to base the sides together. And again, when I get to that corner, I'm stopping and I'm pivoting so I keep with the V in the corner here. I keep with the V. It holds its shape. Now we're going to base these layers together. And I'm going to stop at the center, back stitch, break my stitches, and then I'm going to come back around and start back up at the top here. Baste all the way around. And there we go. I don't have any bulk riding up into the corner there because of the way I came around. So that's how I do it. You can stitch this however you want if you want to just start at the top and go all the way around and stop at the other side. I just find that when I'm stitching, like I said, I'll come around, come around, come around, and I'll come up here, and then all of a sudden my fabric has shifted. Even with using clips, it shifts just that little bit enough that this pushes up some. So I'm just trimming my threads. Now I'm going to repeat that for the remaining pocket. And remember when you get to this middle, stop and turn your fabric.
And there you have it. The two end pockets are top stitched and basted at the bottom. Now we need to, along the bottom edge, we need to place some marks place some marks at the bottom edge here and you'll want to refer to the pattern for where those marks need to be made so I'm going to go off camera go make my marks and then we'll come back and we will continue on and that's at the bottom edge of your pocket here so I'm going to go do that and we'll come back now when we where we've made those marks you're going to pinch the one mark so the mark to the left of the center and you're going to pinch it so the exteriors are touching just like that then you're going to bring that folded edge over to meet the center mark. Clip it in place and you'll repeat that so the exteriors are going to be touching and then you're going to bring that fold over to meet the center mark. So it'll look like that. Repeat that so the line to the left of the center, pinch it so exteriors are together, just like that. Then take it so that the lining side touches the center mark, so just like that. Repeat that so exteriors get folded together at that mark. Then you're going to bring that fold over to the center. So both those folds are now touching. And then we're going to baste this in place. And again, use the seam allowance given in the pattern for this. my threads wherever I can find them and that is how they'll look so they'll have this little pleat which will give it a little bit of a area that you have room to put more stuff in so it kind of gives it like a um, how do I explain this a bump I guess you could say like that so it sticks up it sticks it up puffs the pocket up now we need the two end pieces and you're going to lay one of your exterior ends right side up and you're going to lay the end pocket right side up so they will be lining side touching the exterior of the end piece so lining side of the pocket is touching the exterior of the end piece and we're going to pin this in place all the way around And there is a measurement that you can use to check to see if you have this pinned in place at the correct height. So there's a measurement of how far down from the top of the end is from the top of the pocket. So I'm just pinning this all the way around. what I was thinking of. It poofs up the pocket with that little pleat there. That was the word I was trying to think of. So it kind of poofs up. So now I'm, oops, now, oh that's broken. Now I'm going to repeat that for the other side. I like to do both at the same time just so that it is done. So again, lining side against the exterior side. Clip it in place in the center and then continue clipping all the way around or pinning whatever you're using.
now that I've got them both clipped, I'm going to baste it in place along the three sides. So down this side and all the way around back up the other side. And you can do the same thing I did when we originally basted the two sides of the um, pocket together. Stop in the center and then go back and start at the top. prevent the pocket from shifting on me. And there's the second pocket. Now we need to grab our strap anchors, the end strap anchor, so that's what's going to hold on our adjustable strap. And we need to place these, and there are some measurements in the pattern that we need to refer to for where we're placing these on these end pieces. So I'm going to go make my marks, I'm going to pin them in place and come back and we will stitch them where they need to go. So you'll want to refer to the pattern for where these need to be placed. All right, so I have these pinned in place. Now I'm going to baste them to the end using the seam allowance given in the pattern. ends look once they are stitched in place. We are now going to take the one that has the stabilizer attached and we need our female half of our magnetic snap and we're going to put this at the mark given in the pattern. So using your seam ripper, rip the slits And again, the measurement is given in the pattern for where this is placed. Push the prongs through, place the washer, and normally I would place again a piece of interfacing, but because we've already fused the heavy interfacing, I don't need to do that. I'm going to put some tape over the prongs. Just like that. And the ends are done. That's how they both look. One has the female end of the magnetic snap, one has none. We're going to put these off to the side. I also grabbed out my linings. I didn't need those just yet. We're going to put those to the side and move on. Next, we are going to construct the lining and we need our slip pockets. For the slip pockets, you will place them right sides together.
pin them all the way around. place them right sides together or pretty sides touching. to sew around this with the seam allowance given in the pattern but we're going to leave a gap here at the bottom for turning this right sides out and when you're turn when you're sewing what you want to do is start off the edge of the fabric sew till you get to your seam allowance then keep going turn sorry and go all the way to the corner come all the way down the bottom up the side and back up the top and when you get to where you're leaving your opening so right here Stitch off the fabric, don't forget to back stitch, but stitch off the fabric. And the reason for doing that is that helps it turn in nicer when we turn the opening in the slip pocket after when we're pressing. So I'll show you what I mean. So it may take a bit of maneuvering because you're not seeing where your seam allowance is, but there we go. And again, I like to back stitch at all my corners. So there's a corner there, a back stitch there. I just like the extra security back stitching in a corner gives for when we're pushing the corner out. So I went, oops, it's hard to hold this. Let me see if I can do this this way. So I stitched down here, went across, down, across the bottom, up the side, come across the top. And when I got to here, I stitched up off the fabric. So I'm going to repeat that. Now I'm going to clip my corners, careful not to clip the stitches. Now I'm going to turn these right sides out. need to take this to our iron after we get it all turned right sides out and give it a really good press. What I like to do is take my turning tool and run it along the seams as I mentioned before. That just helps really give it a nice press 
bolts so they're nice and flat before I take it to my iron. And then see here where we did that stitching, see how it makes it so that it's nice and flat there and it makes it so that the seam turns under that exact amount. So now I'm going to take, I'm going to turn this one right side out as well, but I'm going to take this to my iron and give it a good press. And while I'm there, I'm going to turn this one right side out and press it as well. And then we'll come back and we'll continue on with attaching these to our ex uh, lining panels. Now we need to top stitch the top edge of these slip pockets. So there's one. And the top edge I'm using is not the edge with the opening. I'm using that as my bottom. I figure when you're looking down into the bag, you'll see that more. So I just like to leave the opening edge because sometimes it doesn't line up quite as nice. So I like to leave that for the bottom of the pocket. That's just a personal preference. And there's the second one. Now we need to take one of our lining mains and we're going to place this centered at the measurement from down from the top given in the pattern. So you'll want to refer to the pattern for what that measurement is and you'll want to pin it in place. And all I did was fold my slip pocket in half, creating a crease, and then pinning it. I'll repeat that for the second one. Center it. So fold it in half and center it, pin it in place, Oops, this pin's all bent, a lot of my pins are bent now, I'll have to straighten them. There we go. Now we're going to sew the side, down the side, across the bottom, and back up the other side. Don't forget to back stitch it, start and stop. Whoops. The pinhead came right out. There we go. And when I'm coming across this bottom, I'm making sure that that edge that we folded under is caught in the seam. to repeat that for the other one. some marks you need to make on your uh, slip pocket so you'll want to refer to that the pattern for that I've already gone ahead and made those marks so I'm going to stitch along those lines to divide my slip pocket and I'm stitching from the bottom up
make sure to back stitch at the top. That didn't cut for some reason. And for my second pocket, I'm going to divide my pocket a little bit differently because while this is a great size, you can slip, so like for example, I have an EpiPen. I could slip an EpiPen into the center here and then put anything else I need to put inside these bigger pockets. However, I want to have just a divided slip pocket that's divided right down the center. So I'm going to go and sew directly down the center and I can still see where I fold it. So I'm just going to stitch directly on top of that. You can make this slip pocket any size you'd like. If you'd like to have all your spaces closer together for a bunch of pens or anything else like that, go ahead and stitch them at whatever distances you want. You can have it one big slip pocket if you prefer. You can have, like I did, a divided slip pocket. Anything you want, the choice is yours. This is your bag. Make it how you want and how you're going to be really happy with it. Now we're going to create our slip pocket, a zip pocket. For the zipper pocket, you need your zipper pocket panels, your zipper pocket zipper. And I just like grabbing everything now so I have it all in front of me. You need one of your lining panels, so I'm just going to put that over there. And your facing. So first thing we need to do is construct the actual pocket part. So we need to take one of our zipper pocket panels, lay it right side up on your table, and lay the zipper right side up along the top edge of this pocket. And if you have a zipper foot, it may be helpful to switch to a zipper foot for when you're sewing this, if you feel like your, your presser foot is too big for this. So there it is. Now we're going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. And when I get close to where my zipper pull is, I'm actually going to zip it out of the way just because the zipper being there, it kind of creates a bump. So this is your zipper pocket. The zipper kind of does this little bump where the, the zipper pull is. So to avoid that and keep it straight and flat, I zip it out of the way. Also to avoid me hitting it, I zip it out of the way. That's especially important if you have a zipper that has a dangling pull. Like mine is kind of dangling and it could get underneath my presser feet. So now that I've stitched that, I'm going to press this away from the pocket. So now we're going to lay the remaining zipper pocket panel right side up and lay this right side down so pretty sides of the pocket are touching on top of the remaining slip or zipper pocket and your zipper is still going to be facing you it's still going to be right side up and you want to align these side edges here of your zipper pocket so make sure those side edges are all aligned <clears throat> Just like that and now we're going to sew that with the seam allowance given in the pattern and again when I approach where that zipper pull is I'm going to move it out of the way my zipper pull doesn't come off. I'm just going to back stitch a few times to create a bar tack over the zipper teeth just like that. That way there if I pull my zipper accidentally too far I'm not going to have any issues with the zipper pull coming off. So I'm just finger pressing. You can definitely take this to the iron and press it with your iron. I'm just finger pressing. I feel that that is good enough. I'm going to place this off to the side for now. Now we're going to work with our pocket facing. And your pocket facing, usually what I do is I have it match whatever my lining fabric is. So I always have them match because the pocket facing is going to be what hides this zipper. So I like to have it match so that you don't even see it at all. It just blends right in. 
However, I have a little trick for you. So here's the pocket facing. You would draw all your lines you need to draw, which are given in the pattern. All the measurements are given in the pattern. You'd want to refer to that to draw all your lines. However, little trick time. And I did confirm with Tara, she is okay with me showing this because this is something I do like to do. And I just find you can use this anytime you have a pocket that's being installed that uses pocket facing. You can cut a piece of interfacing. So your woven interfacing, cut it the exact measurement that's given in the pattern for your pocket facing. Nothing changes. This becomes your pocket facing. When you draw your lines for the measurement for the zipper pocket opening, you're going to be drawing it on the glue side of the interfacing. So make sure it's on the glue side. And you know it's the glue side because either it'll feel rough like this, which I don't like that feeling, or you'll be able to see it, it kind of has like a bit of a shine to it. Like you'll see it sort of shimmer or glisten when you put it to the light. But generally it usually has a bit of a rougher feel to it. You know what side is it, it is. So that's the side you're going to draw your zipper pocket opening on, is on the glue side. Once you have that drawn, you'll continue with the instructions. So I'm, I'm treating this as if it was this fabric. This one here, I'm treating it as if it was that. Press this in half and place it at the mark that's given in the pattern. Centered and at the mark. it in place sometimes I'm, when I'm pinning I forget that I'm filming and I forget that you're just sitting there watching me and it's dead silent I try to fill the dead silent moments with tips and tricks however sometimes I get right into what I'm doing and I'm just so zoned and focused that I just forget I'm really sorry about those dead silent moments however if you get bored you can go ahead and fast forward through so you don't have to see that anyways Back to what I was saying. So my zipper pocket facing is facing with the glue side facing up or yours will be wrong side facing up with your box that you've drawn or your long rectangle. Now we're going to stitch right on top of this rectangle that we do, drew directly on top. And another tip I just wanted to give, you can stitch around this entire box. However, another thing that I like to do is I don't like to sew the short edges. I stop when I get to that end on both ends. So I'll start back stitch, stitch all the way along, stop here. Then I'll come down and I'll stitch the second, oops, the second line. And I leave my short edges unsewn. It is written in the pattern to sew them, so go ahead and sew all the way around. But you can do this too, where you just sew the two long edges, not the short edges. Then everything is the same when you're cutting. When you cut here, you cut down the center and you cut those V's, you stop. I just find that this gives the sides a nicer pocket and you don't get all that extra wrinkles or waviness in the corners here. So that's just something else that I like to do. And again, I've discussed this with Tara about sharing all these extra tips and tricks that aren't in this pattern. I just thought I'd share them all because I have all these little extra tips and tricks that I just thought it'd be nice to share them for everybody to have different things to do or try when you're making your bag and you never know it may be something that you learn and you really like it and you just continue doing it with every bag you make I keep hoping I haven't ran out of bobbin <laughs> straight edges and that was my choice you may have those short straight edges sewn now I'm going to take my seam ripper and I'm going to start ripping down the center and I only use my seam ripper to get it started then I use my scissors and I cut going all the way and then make those V's into the corner if you accidentally snip your stitches 
not to panic there is a simple solution you'll just start at the top or at the bottom wherever you want back stitch on top of those previous stitches stitch all the way around come back down the short edge and stitch all the way around and back stitch that'll help relock in all those stitches and that'll help stitch where you accidentally cut if you've only sewn the straight edges you'll do the same thing just on the straight edge instead All right, so here's where the magic happens. I'm going to press this with my fingernail. Just like that. Now we're going to push this pocket facing through to the wrong side. And when you push it through, what you'll notice will happen is the sticky side of the interfacing will now be against the wrong side of the lining. So when we press this, that actually holds that facing in place and nothing will shift on you. Just like that, nothing shifts and it's all fused and that holds that down because oftentimes what happens when I use this kind of fabric that matches my lining, I end up using double sided tape to help hold it down or even painters tape to help hold it down. But this means I don't have to because my interfacing is stuck to the back side of my lining and it looks really nice and really clean and you have a really beautiful looking um, bag and turned out pocket. So I'm going to go press that with my iron and come back and we will add our zipper pocket. So there you go, I've pressed my facing to the wrong side and I used interfacing which helps hold it in place. So now it's not moving on me and I don't have to add any double sided tape, it's nice and flat against it. However, if you used your material for your pocket facing. You can go ahead and apply some double sided tape along here and that'll help hold it down and keep it flat for you when you're um, stitching this. Now we need to take our pocket, our zipper, with the zipper pocket pieces attached and we need to lay it in front of you with the zipper right side up. The zipper head being closed will be to the left. You're going to lay this over top, so you may want to use some double-sided tape for this. So place some double-sided tape along your zipper, both the long edges. And I'm really excited about my pull because it is a citrus fruit and I thought how cool was that that it matched with the fruit and how birds like to eat fruit because I have birds on the exterior. I really liked it. I was really excited and this is from Vala Creative Designs. I'll link to them below in the description. They have lots of beautiful zippers and beautiful pulls um, and they also have fabrics, pre-orders of fabrics and vinyls and webbing, all sorts of things, really beautiful stuff so worth checking out again zipper pull is facing to the left we're going to center this over top of the zipper so the zipper will be centered and you'll know it's centered because your facing is actually the same width as your zipper pocket pieces There we go, give it a good press. And now we're going to top stitch all around that box. And make sure you move your zipper head out of the way. And what I'm doing here is pinning this so that it doesn't, oops, it doesn't shift up under my presser foot. And I'm going to pin the pocket down as well, the bottom part of the pocket, just so that this doesn't slide up, it end up underneath your zipper. Um, I have had that happen before and then I have to pick it all apart and it was when my top stitching was probably the nicest it's ever been around a zipper pocket so I was really disappointed. So I'm going to stitch all the way around this zipper pocket opening and you can do the same thing we did earlier which is leave long tails, start stitching, don't back stitch, go all the way around, come back to where you started, leave long tails again and then pull them through to the back if you don't want any back stitching.
all your threads. Remove the clips. Place your pins away. Now we're going to flip this over so we're looking at the wrong side. And I'm just going to zip and unzip my zipper. And we're going to place these panels so they are right sides together. And we're only going to sew through the zipper pocket panel pieces. And if you didn't use an interfacing for your zipper facing, which I was able to pull my zipper facing back here. So I've got it pulled back. I can stitch through my zipper facing as well. I was able to peel it off. And you're going to stitch through all those layers, not through the lining. So just through your zipper facing, your zipper, and your pocket panels. If you've used interfacing and you don't want to try and peel it back from your lining, you'll just sew through the zipper pocket and the zipper. And you'll sew this with the seam allowance, oops, given in the pattern. My thread came out of my needle. is going to be feeling like it's going to be getting in the way because it might be dangly or such. Zip it up so it's halfway. Now we have this bottom piece here. Oops, I should split this this way. This bottom piece here that is left. We're going to trim that so that it is even with the other one, the shorter one. Just like that. And you can trim the excess off the zippers as well. So I'm going to trim the excess off mine. They're not needed there anymore. Just like that. If you do have any that are longer. If not, you can leave it whatever you choose. And that is how it looks with your zipper pocket all installed. Now we need to repeat the same steps we did when we attached the exterior and the base. Except for for this base, there are no purse feet, so you don't have to worry about that. But you do need to line up your center marks and your sides. And then we're going to stitch it in place the same way we did with the exteriors. allowance given in the pattern we're going to press the seam towards the base going to finger press because finger pressing this thin of material is pretty easy so now that it's pressed I'm going to top stitch that seam to repeat that for the remaining lining main panel.
So this as well with the seam allowance given in the pattern. towards the base Oops. I'm going to take this to my iron because this side's a little bit harder to press with my fingers so I'll take this to my iron and I'll come back and we'll continue on so now that that seam is pressed we're going to sew this or top stitch this sorry the same way we top stitched the other seam just like that. You can set this constructed lining mains aside for now. So I'm going to put that with my other ones. Now we need to work on our gathered pockets and there will be four of these. They look like this. So you'll need two first. You'll place two of the gather gathered pockets right sides together and you'll sew along the top and the bottom edges. And for this again, I'm going to sew the top edge, then I'm going to turn around and sew the bottom edge. So I'm going to pin the top edge, sew my top edge, and then I will sew my bottom edge. And the top edge is this edge that's smaller, so not the edge with the rounded. The rounded parts are at the bottom of the pocket. You can go ahead and pin both right now if you want. Both edges. some clips and then I'll sew this bottom edge as well with the seam allowance given in the pattern. so I'm just going to change my bobbin thread. I keep lots of spools wound so that I'm ready to go when I run out. There we go. And I'm ready to go again. I forget to wind a bunch of bobbins before I start and then I run out and that's when I remember. But I try to always have some bobbins wound before I start a project. Provided I have enough spare bobbins. <laughs> Excuse me. Provided I have enough spare bobbins to do that. Sometimes I don't. And sometimes I'm using a smaller spool of thread. So I'm worried if I wind too many bobbins I won't have enough thread on that spool. So it really depends on a few things. So now that we have these 
like that, we're going to turn them right side out and press the two seams. So turn them right side out, take it to your iron and press the two seams. So I'm going to go do that and come back and we will continue on. All right, so I've pressed my pockets. Now we need to take our elastic and slip it into the slip pocket or gathered pocket. And I'm just going to clip mine on one end. You can also wait to add your elastic till you're done the stitching here because there's some stitching that we do to create a casing for the elastic. You can also wait until you're done that stitching if you prefer. And I know my elastic isn't the right width of elastic. I don't have that elastic on hand and I totally forgot to go get some. So I'm just using the elastic I do have on hand for this step. So put the elastic in through both gathered pockets. And I'm just clipping the elastic in place up near the top seam here. Make sure your elastic is flat. And there goes my chair being squeaky squeaky again. And there is a tip at the bottom here that Tara gives, and that's what I'm going to do now, which is stitch one end of my elastic in place so that it holds there and it doesn't come out when I am pulling the fabric after. So just like that on one end, and that holds the elastic in place. Now there is a measurement that we need to make from the down, from the top down, and you'll want to make that mark, refer to the pattern for that, and then we'll stitch directly along that line or that measurement. And just make sure your elastic is kept out of the way when you're stitching. Keep your elastic out of the way. You don't want to stitch over the elastic. And then when I get to the end, I'll do the same thing. I'll stitch. I'll go back and stitch up over that elastic to help hold it in place. Just like that. Now there's another line of sewing we need to do and that's at the bottom with a basting stitch so that's a long stitch length and we need to leave long tails you'll want to refer to the pattern for what the measurement is that we're sewing at the bottom out at the bottom here but at the bottom of each pocket we're going to sew across so now I'm going to do that and I still have a clip in place for where that other end of the elastic is oh I need back stitch we don't need to back stitch that's the other thing No back stitching, just weave your long tails. If you do back stitch like I did, just unpick the back stitching. And I'm going to repeat that for the other side. So now we need to pull this fabric. So you're going to pull where the elastic is. And there's a measurement in the pattern for how wide the top needs to be. So I'm going to leave that for now so I can explain the bottom. So once you get that pulled to the measurement, so say 
this is the measurement here and that's that's the width that it needs to be you're going to then stitch over the elastic to hold it in place and then trim your elastic however i wanted to show you about this bottom part because this bottom one we're going to be gathering this fabric and you're going to pull the bobbin thread and you're just going to continue gathering it in like that until this is also the width given in the pattern and you'll just keep doing that and another thing that I find is very helpful is I start pulling on this end as well and then I tie this end off and that way there I don't accidentally pull out that bobbin thread on this end so I do that every time I have to do this and then I'll measure this and see if this is the measurement that's given in the pattern and if it is I'll then evenly space this all out the, the pleats here I'll evenly space them all out throughout the pocket so I'm going to go off camera because I need to take my ruler out and measure and then I'll come back and my pockets will be completed so again you're pulling the bobbin thread to make this gather at the bottom and then you're pulling your elastic just through the casing like that until this is also the length and there are two measurements given in the pattern and once that's the length you'll stitch this here in place for the elastic once this is gathered and the length you want just tie a knot in here and tie the long threads off so I'm going to go do that and come back and we will continue on so once you have everything all pulled and gathered the way it is told to in the pattern for the width of where the elastic is and the width where the bottom bottom of the pocket is we need to grab our lining end pieces the end lining end not n and we need to place them at the measurement given in the pattern so there's a measurement here from the bottom up that you need to place this at pin it in place and then we're going to continue pinning it around the curve there's a little bit of the curve there Now, the elastic part you could have left until you had this top piece all stitched here at the top. You could have left it and fished the elastic through after. However you do it is totally your choice. I just did it right when we were stitching it. just seemed to be easier when it was just being done right away. But do whatever is easier for you. If you find that elastic being there when you're stitching that first piece of the casing it's going to be hard for you and you keep hitting the elastic go ahead pull the elastic out stitch the casing and then fish, fish the elastic through with a safety pin a bodkin anything that you use to put your elastic through a casing We're going to sew on top of the bottom stitches here, top stitching along the bottom here. So at the bottom we're going to sew along and it'll be um, pleated underneath our press of foot. Just make sure that the bottom stays aligned up with that measurement you used to place the pocket. Just make sure it stays lined up with that. And I just adjust pleats as I go, making it pleat. It's not going to look the super prettiest.
then we're going to sew up the sides. Oh, sorry, first we're going to remove those basting stitches that we used to gather the pocket. I couldn't find my seat ripper, so I'm just going to break the stitches. get my seam ripper in there without ripping my fabric. There we go. And I'm just going to undo the side here so that I can get at this side, making it easier for me to pull. Because what you can do is get these both unstitched, like cause a, I mean break the stitches, and it's nice that they're longer, however I'm having a hard time getting my seam ripper in there without and now you should be able to grab one thread. So the bod, bod, bob, bobbin, oh my goodness, the bobbin thread or the top thread and you should be able to grab them and just keep pulling. However, it's not doing that for me so I'm just going to unstick some more. It's not letting me do that. Normally I can grab one of the threads and just pull and it just tightens it the way it was when we were gathering the uh, pocket and it pulls it all the way through. So I'm just pulling this thread out. So I'm going to continue pulling the thread out. I'm going to pause the camera because you don't need to sit and watch me do that. But we're taking out that basting stitch that we did at the bottom of the gathered pocket that's no longer needed there. So you've top stitched this down. We got to remove the basting stitches. I'm going to top stitch the bottom edge of this pocket down as well and remove the basting stitches. Then I'll come back and we will continue on. Now that we have those stitches removed and if you're worried about the holes that are left in your fabric, you can just over with your finger or your nail and that gets rid of them. However, this is at the bottom of the bag. Nobody's going to really see that. So now we're going to baste the sides of the gathered pocket to the sides of the end. Do this for both sides. And for both ends as well, for the second end. two gathered pockets are now attached to the lining ends. We can put these to the side and move on. Now we're going to make our key strap. This is totally optional. You don't need to do it. However, I'm going to do it just to show you how to make it. So we're going to fold them the same way we folded the strap. Open it up, fold the two long edges in to meet the center, then fold it in half again, enclosing all the edges. And just before you begin, you're going to fold one of those short edges in to meet um, one of those short edges under by the measurement given in the pattern. And because I'm not doing that, I'm going to do it the way that I had done the straps, the same way. That just gives one end finished on your key strap.
Now we're going to top stitch all three edges and I'm going to use some clips to hold everything in place for me. This is very little. Then we will stitch all three sides. this raw edge here and go back down the other side. take our swivel hook and you're going to slip it onto the edge that's finished and you can use a rivet here or you can sew. I'm just going to sew because this is going in the inside of the bag so I'm just going to sew across and I'm going to do two rows of stitching. all your threads, get it nice and clean. Then we need our lining. So I'm just trying to grab my lining here. And there's a measurement in the pattern for where you're going to place this. So I'm going to go off camera, I'm going to make the measurement, and I'm going to place this along the top. And it really doesn't matter which side you put it on, if you put it on the side with the zipper pocket, or you put it on the side with the slip pocket. So I'm going to go make that measurement and come back and we will baste it in place. Sorry, I made a mistake when I grabbed my lining. I meant to grab my lining end. That is where you're placing your key strap. So you'll use the measurement for where you're placing it, and then we will baste it in place. Just like that. All right, so now we need to construct the gusset. We need our zipper gusset first, and then there is the piece with the stabilizer attached to the back, and this is where we're going to attach our last piece of our magnetic snap, the male half, and you're going to use the measurement and the pattern for where to place your um, magnetic snap. So you'll want to refer to the pattern for that, for where to place it. So same thing as we did before, make your slits, I can't find my seam ripper. Oh, it's right here. <laughs> Make the slits in the fabric for the prongs of the magnetic snap. And again, normally I would put a little piece of interfacing behind, but because we have the interfacing already fused to the fabric, I'm not concerned about it. piece of tape over the prongs. My scissors are all gunked up. I'm going to have to clean them after this. So I've put some tape over the prongs just like that. Now we're going to set this to the side. We need our zippers. So you're going to take these zippers and you're going to trim them to the length that's given in the pattern. Once you have them trimmed, there is a mark you need to make on the right side of the zipper 
and on the left side of the zipper. And you want it where the zipper goes up. So not at the end that stays closed, the end that will open up when you open up the, zi the zipper. So I've made my marks already. I'm going to open my zipper so that it splits apart just like that. And I've made that mark. So I'm going to pinch my zipper at that mark and then I'm going to fold it at a 90 degree angle. And I have a tutorial on my YouTube channel that goes further in depth with how this is done. So I'll link it below if you'd like to watch it and see how it's done before you start folding your zipper for this. It'll, it's really helpful, a helpful tutorial. So now I'm doing that on the right side of the zipper. So you'll notice only one end is turned and that's what you want, only one end turned. So pinching at that line we made and then folding it up so that that line is right under and against those zipper teeth. And after this, I'm going to take this to my iron and I'm going to press it so that that mark I made, because I used a pen that can be removable, I'm going to take it to my iron and press it so that that line is gone away. And actually, I'm not super concerned about it because when we're constructing the gusset, I have to press anyway, so that'll press that away. So now we're going to baste these ends in place so that they don't move on us. And if you have a pin there, just be careful that you don't hit the pin when you're stitching. to trim off this end of the zipper so that it's even with the zipper tape. And they will look like that. And I'm just going to clip my threads now. Because there's some that I didn't get. So now that we have both those zippers done, don't cut this end here. That one end is going to stay long. You're not cutting that end. It's gonna have one that's folded and one that's not. Don't cut that end. Leave it long on both the zippers. Now you would have normally, if you were following the pattern, you would have done one and then you would have repeated that, but I just did that there now. You also need to mark the centers of the zipper, which I had already gone and done, so make sure you mark the centers, which is easy to do if you haven't done it yet. The end that's not turned under will be the end that you line up with the other end and then just fold it in half and you'll be able to find the center. Now we need to take the exterior gusset, exterior zipper gusset, oops. And there are some zipper markings that you need to make that are transferred from the pattern piece. You'll want to use those and use your pattern piece and make those markings. So I'm just going to go make sure that these markings are correct and I'm going to come back and we will continue on. All right, so my markings are good. Now you need to take the folded edge, so the edge of the zipper that you folded, and place it at that first mark that you made. Pin it in place right at that first mark. Then pin the center to the center marking and then you will pin it the rest of the way. So pin it all the way in the center here between the two pins that you just placed first and then we're going to pin it down. And there is a curve here so you want to curve it around that edge.
So right here where it curves, I've put a lot of clips just to help hold that in place. So now I'm going to attach the second zipper so that I can sew them both at the same time. Or not sew them at the same time, but sew them one after the other and not have to worry about stopping the pin. So matched up that top mark, matched up the center of the zipper. This is where I start to get really excited because there's only a few pieces left here beside me for what we need to sew. So this is where I get really excited because I know we're almost done the bag. The final construction, though it does take a little bit of time, we are almost done. And again, there's a little bit of a curve here. So I'm just following that curve and I'm placing lots of clips to help hold it in place. to make sure this side is clipped really well. There we go. So now we're going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the in the pattern. We're just basting this in place. And I'm going a little bit slower here just because I want to make sure that nothing shifts on me. Especially coming up around that little curve up here. I just want everything to stay nice and lined up where it's supposed to be. And right here, because there is a curve, and your zipper is straight, so it's going to want to go straight on you. And I'm going slow so I can use my fingers to really flatten out any puckers that are starting to form and happen. There's one side done. And now I'm going to base stitch the second side. And again, just taking my time coming around this curve here. awkward because I'm sewing on the side that I usually don't sew on when I'm sewing this side so it feels a little bit awkward but it works. And 
now I'm just going to clip the thread there. Now we're going to lay oops, our lining on top. Thought I saw a thread. Now we're going to lay the lining on top. And the lining is the one that looks like this, same piece, and it'll have the magnetic snap. And you'll want to line up those lines that you made. So it's good to have all these lines here because you can line everything up and make sure everything stays nice when you're sewing. I'm going to pin around this curve. Keep dropping clips everywhere. Pin around the curve, then I'm going to line up those center marks, and then I'll continue pinning the rest of the way. So center marks are all lined up. Pin between the center marks and the mark up here for the zipper. And then when we stitch this, we're going to stitch this using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And you may want to switch out to a zipper foot or a thin foot, narrow foot um, for stitching this. That'll make it easier for stitching the zipper because you want to get close to those teeth. And sometimes the regular presser foot doesn't let you get too close to the teeth. So you want to switch out to a different foot for sewing zippers, whatever foot you use for that. going to line up my bottoms and I'm even going to put a pin there I'm just putting some extra clips around those curves here at the bottom just because I know that that is where my zipper is and I don't want anything to shift on me. So I'm going to switch out to a zipper foot. given in the pattern. So we're going to sew up this edge around the curve and back down. We're going to leave this straight edge here open. where my zipper pull is so I'm just going to undo some of the clips here at the top and I'm going to lift up my presser foot and I'm going to reach in and zip my zipper past my presser foot it's going to be hard when we do this to the other side because the other side will be will have it been sewn so I'll have to reach through and kind of do it you know what I might be able to yeah I'll be able to push it with my thumb out of the way so continue stitching now that your zipper pull is out of the way. Continue stitching.
and I'm just going to back stitch where this zipper is just because it does take a lot of stress when you're zipping and unzipping things. a little bit so I'm going to go back it's such a long piece that it's hard to really control and again I'm approaching where that zipper start it is so I'm just going to back stitch over it just to really make sure it's nice and secure and I can feel where my zipper is, so I'm just going to slide it out of the way. Oops. I can actually do this. Slide the zipper pull out of the way. Clip everything back. Just like that. And now I'm going to zip my zipper pull out of the way past my and I'm just using my thumb I can feel the bottom of the zipper pull and I'm just using my thumb to push it because we can't open up everything like we did on the other side and push it out of the way so this is how I'm doing it this way it's a little bit tricky but you can do it and there it is it's out of the way here is and I'm not going to remove my clips until my presser foot oops, is right at them. This way here it makes sure nothing shifts on me. And this corner here, this curve where I kind of went off, I'm going to go back and stitch that, re-stitch it just so that it's nice and even. That just means that I'm going to have a nice curve there and I don't have to worry about it. Now, we need to trim the foam out of the seam allowance. So that means we're going to do the same thing we did earlier. I basted it to my foam with stitches so you need to remove all those stitches so it's the same thing just remove all the stitches if you used glue you can be able to pull it apart so I'm going to go remove all these stitches cut the foam out of the seam allowance then we'll come back and we will continue on with our gusset all right so I've trimmed the foam out of the seam allowance now we need to turn this right sides out And this can be a little bit tricky because you're reaching into an area that gets kind of small. So I just keep reaching in and pulling more out as I'm going. The first one I did, my husband had to help me because I got it stuck. I'm hoping that doesn't help happen with this one. It's really hard on your hands. There is a tip for leaving the side open if you're using a thicker fabric. So if you were doing this in cotton, I mean in cork, vinyl, or faux leather, you could leave the opening in the side for turning this right side out. It starts to really hurt my hand.
There's also this curve here that you'll want to clip into just to help round this out a bit. I'm going to avoid cutting where the zipper is. And I'm using pinking shears here just so that I don't have to cut any V's. I'm doing that before that gets pulled in. hurts my hands to do this but if I keep going I can get it this is where it got stuck last time and my husband had to finish Almost got it. It's about half now. Yeah, it's right here. This is probably one of the hardest parts of this whole bag. And I could have left the turning gap along one of the side edges. However, I just like it when it's at the bottom. It just makes it easier. Oh, there's one of my pulls. If I can get that out, it'll be good. There's one of the zipper pulls. See it right there? We're making progress. Oops. I think that's what's causing some issues right here, that second pull. I don't know how my husband did this so fast when he did it. It's like it looked like it took him no effort to get it done. hands aren't very happy but I got it so I'm just sticking in my turning tool all the way to the end and I'm just going to press out this seam smooth it out at the top here now we need to take this to our iron and press it however there is a magnetic snap, so when you're pressing, be careful not to touch the magnetic snap so that you don't demagnetize it, or so that you, yeah, you don't demagnetize it. So I'm going to take this over to my iron, and I'm going to give it a really good pressing. But this is how it's looking so far, which is really nice, looks really good so far. So I'm going to take it to the iron, give it a really good press, and I'll come back, and we will top stitch all the way around this. 
So now that I have this all nicely pressed, I'm going to top stitch the same three edges that we stitched previously. And I'm just going to remove this foot and put on my other foot. So you're not stitching this short edge, you're just stitching the three edges that we stitched when we stitched the zippers in place and around that top curve. threads that are there and that is how it will look once you have it all top stitched now we're going to attach the zipper gussets so you're going to take the zipper gussets and that's what these pieces are here so I have the lining and the exteriors and we're going to place them right sides together with the right side of the zipper so right side with the right side of the zipper. So flip it all the way. Make sure you're following that curve of the gusset. Use lots of clips to help hold everything in place. And this is where you're going to need to switch out to your uh, zipper foot again. I just like using my regular foot for top stitching. Oops. And I'm making sure I'm lining up this bottom edge here with the bottom edge of that gusset that we've already attached previously. So I'm just making sure everything's going to line up. And I'm going to pin both the exterior, do I keep calling this wrong? These are, these are the top gussets, the exterior top gusset. I'm going to pin both of them to the zipper so I can sew both at the same time. So do one right after the other, I don't have to stop to pin. And then I'll pin my lining to the zipper. Don't be afraid to use lots of pins and clips to hold everything in place. You don't want anything to shift on you while you're sewing. So now I'm going to repeat that for the second side.
to use these clips because it's starting to hurt my hands after turning that zipper gusset right sides out. My hands are very sore now. But we're almost done. So now I have that all clipped, I'm going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. It's going to be a basting stitch. So you can use a longer stitch length for this if you prefer. So sew it along the entire edge, paying attention to those curves that this does have. Keeping everything lined up. approaching where that zipper pull is, so I'm just moving it out of my way so I don't accidentally stitch on it. On to the next side. Unzip your zipper a little bit. you can get past it where it needs to be. Now I'm going to zip it back up. And that caused my zipper to pull over a bit. A stiletto could be helpful here. I'm just using my fingers, being careful not to catch my fingers under my presser foot. Back at the bottom where there's another curve, take your time. threads just so they're not in the way and now I'm going to pin my lining to the exterior so you're going to make a zipper sandwich so I'm going to pin the lining right sides against the wrong side of the zipper line up the ends on both sides I'm going to add a clip down here too. I'll zip this up for now just till I get it pinned. I just can't because that clip was there. And then once you have this all clipped, you'll sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. You'll sew both linings to the exterior.
You really want to pay special attention to keeping those curves the way they are because this is what gives the top of the bag the shape for the zipper gusset as well and for the gusset. So you want to pay special attention keeping those curves the way they are on the pattern piece. Make sure you have it so that the way this curves with the zipper so it goes like that that's where marking a T is handy so you know where the top and the bottom is and that's the top is going to be where your zipper is so the curve when it's out will be that way so it'll curve like this away from the zipper I should have mentioned that before we started pinning Pay special attention to these curves here, the way they are. You want to keep those curves, especially when you're sewing this. It takes a lot of clips to hold everything in place. Now we're going to sew that with the seam allowance given in the pattern. And I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to sew from the exterior side so that I can see the previous stitches as well. And I just find I have more control this way of my materials. because I'm holding as well the lining in place because it's against the bed of my machine. pull is so I'm going to lift my presser foot and slide the zipper pull out of the way just like that and once you turn it it'll look like this look how beautiful that gusset looks so nice and perfect once we get it all stitched now to repeat that for the opposite side and my zipper pull is going to be in the way, so I'm just going to slide it down out of the way, just so I can get started here.
can trim the foam out of the seam allowance again and then we're going to press these so i'm going to go do that i'm going to do it off camera and go press these and then we will come back and we will top stitch the seams on both sides of the top gusset so now i'm going to top stitch through all the layers just down the side beside the zipper now i had already gone ahead and attached the other side so i'm doing the top stitching at the same time however once you top stitch one side you may still have this second side to go and attach but I did them at the same time just because I like to get it over with while I'm sewing one I like to just do the other one so now I'm going to top stitch this again follow that curve and I put the clips at the bottom here you'll notice I have clips on both sides that's just to hold the lining fabrics down helps keep it nice and pressed too, keeps everything flat. And my zipper pull is kind of dangly, so I'm going to zip it out of the way. And now to top stitch the other side. Again, I have this dangly zipper pull, so I'm just going to zip it out of the way for now until I can get far enough past where it needs to be. the longest and hardest part of making this bag because of turning that gusset right sides out it probably makes it the most difficult part of the bag but once you're done it and completed it it is a really good feeling to have it completely done and moving on to our next step so I'm just trimming all my threads just making sure I get them all because like I said before sometimes they like to come back and peekaboo back up through the seam so that is how that looks. I'm going to leave these clips on for now. We're going to put this to the side, or not put this to the side, we're going to move on to the next step. Now we need to grab our end pieces. So the lining end and the exterior ends. And you're going to take one of the linings and place it so the gathered pocket is facing up. And you're going to open it up so that it's just your lining exposed right now. So I'm going to take these clips off. And you're pinning just the linings at this moment, not the exterior. So just the linings where the top gusset is. So the top gusset lining to the end piece. Line everything up on both sides. Just like that. And now we're going to sew across this, making sure this center, this piece here from the zipper gusset is out of the way. So I just like to sew it or unzip it and move it out of the way. So we're going to sew right up to the zipper here. So we're going to sew through these two layers, just the lining layers with a full seam allowance. And you're going to the edge of the zipper. one side and now we're going to repeat that for the second side and this may be a little bit tricky because there's going to be lots of layers just take your time so it'll look like that you have just the lining 
ends, the end pieces here, sewn. And you've sewn up to the zipper end. And actually, I kind of go over the zipper just a wee little bit, just to make sure that it's grabbed and it's holding on. Now, we need to grab the end piece, the exterior end piece that has the half of the magnetic snap, because when this is all turned right side out, this is where this snaps closed, and that's how that looks. So that's the outside, then that's the inside. So we need to get this out of the way. Take the exterior and pin it in the same manner that we did for the lining, except for we have that middle piece where we can pin the lining and exterior together. So I'm just going to pin the ends first. And make sure your D-ring is out of the way. It's not flipped up. Make sure it's flipped down towards the bottom of the panel towards the bottom of the end panel. So I have the ends pinned, so these, these same edges that we just sewed the lining, I've pinned those ends, but now we're going to pin the lining here to the exterior. And this is where those zippers will stick up a little bit, and that's what you want. You want them sticking up just that little bit because they are kind of angled. So they'll be sticking up just that wee little bit. And you want to make sure they are, you want to make sure they're going to get caught in your seam allowance because we're going to sew over these. If you don't catch them in that seam allowance, they are going to pull out of the bag once you're turning the bag right side out. So you really want to pay special attention to where those zippers are and make sure that they're in that seam. So the first section we're going to sew is we're going to sew this middle section between the zipper here. We're going to sew that. So it's going to seem a little bit tricky, but once you get it done, it'll make sense. So I'm just going to slide this under my presser foot. I'm going to go this way. I think. And I can see the zipper, I can feel it, it's under there, that's good. And I'm just back stitching, and I'm back stitching quite a bit there just to really make sure it really grabs the zipper. Trust me, this is all worth it. And make sure this piece is slipped down too, you don't want to catch that end of the zipper gusset. And again, I can see where this zipper is, so I'm paying special attention to make sure it's caught in my seam. Now we're going to do the same thing we did with the lining, which is sew just the exteriors together here, your, the side of your top gusset to the side of the end and making sure that that D-ring is out of the way. Don't have it facing up. And if you're really worried about hitting it, you can switch to oops, switch to a zipper foot. That'll help you get right past that end without getting anywhere near the D-ring and hitting the hardware. Checking to make sure everything's good. Everything's good so far. Oh, of course, my thread came out of my needle. sewing using binding, this bag using binding, there is a different method that you can find in the pattern. So this is turning the bag through the zipper pocket, but if you're doing the binding, this will be a different method altogether, and you can find that later in the pattern. And all you're doing is sewing your pieces right sides together. And I have a tutorial for doing binding. I'll post it below as well for how to bind a bag and what to do. So I have that, so I will post it below. So here's how this looks right now. 
and I can see this thread and sometimes if I peek through I can see where it's coming from when they peek out the seams. These threads are little buggers. So once you flip this you can see my zipper here is caught in this seam and that's what I want. I want that zipper caught in that seam. You don't you want to make sure that you're sewing over it. You don't want to not sew over it. So make sure you sew over that zipper because if you don't, when you turn this right side out, that zipper is going to come out. And if you're really wanting to, you could go back and sew over it and just tack a few extra stitches just to really make sure it's tacked in there. So now we're going to take this to our iron and we're going to press this so that it's nicely pressed and then we're going to top stitch just these side edges here. So I'm going to take this to my iron, I'm going to press it and come back and we will top stitch. Now we need to top stitch this seam that we just pressed and we're going to top stitch from the outside of one zipper to the outside of the other zipper and that's the only place you're going to top stitch. So I'm going to slide this out of the way for now because it's going to get in my way. And I've used lots of clips again to help me hold everything in place. I feel like I can get that better. you can always again leave long tails like we did previously tie them off in the back if you don't want any back stitching I have a busier print so it's not as noticeable and there's that sneaky little bugger again trying to poke through there we go so now we're going to repeat that for the other side so we need the lining and again, I'm leaving these clipped that just holds my lining in place. So we need the lining. We're going to pin the lining of the gussets. And this is another chance where you can see if your magnetic snap lines up, which mine does. Great chance to see if it does. Right there. So now we're going to line up the lining and gusset with the end, the lining top gusset with the end, same thing we did previously and we're just going to sew these top gussets here, the side of the top gussets on the lining, not the exterior and not in the middle. Sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. And this is the one that has my key strap, so I'm just going to pull it down so that it's nice and straight. And I'm going to stitch back over that. Oh, I'm using a stitch line that's too long here. And I just back stitched over where that key strap is just to really make sure it's held in place. You don't want it to accidentally come out of your bag. Now we're going to clip the <coughs> exterior to the exterior part of the gusset. To the, I mean the exterior gusset to the exterior side of the end piece. Okay. 
and then pin the centers. And there are those zippers again, so just pay attention to where those zippers are. And I'm lining up my center marks as well. And you want to make sure you sew over those zippers. Make sure you catch those in your seam allowance. It is very important so that they don't poke through at the end and you don't have them come through. So we're going to sew the middle first, right over the zippers. where the other seam is that's where you want to start is right just past that other seam that where the folded edges are I hope that makes sense so where you've top stitched or stitched the two top gussets to the zipper where that seam ends up folding where we top stitched I stop right before that seam that way there I'm kind of going halfway through the zipper So there's this seam here. You're kind of going halfway through the zipper. So I'm going to finish because I didn't. There we go. Make sure I finished that on that side. I can stitch a little bit more there. There we go. Now we're going to stitch the ends of our gussets. So now we're going to sew this end just like we did previously. Make sure that D-ring is down so you don't stitch over it. And I forgot to mention this when we sewed the other one. But you'll want to back stitch over this just to double secure, extra security on this end strap connector. take this to the iron and we're going to give it a press just like we did with the other side and then we'll come back and top stitch just as we did and we so now we're going to top stitch that same way we did on the other side just between the zippers so from one outside end of the zipper to the other outside end of the zipper and there's going to be this so I'm going to roll this all up many things to compete with here. there so if your machine is struggling you can go ahead and cut some of the foam out of the seam allowance as we have done previously you can also try a bigger needle that often helps adjust your tension and your stitch length make it even longer that'll help as well I'm going to clip this back in place I didn't want that there while I was sewing I didn't want it to be accidentally caught in the seam so there is that we have top stitched both ends between the zippers so just from 
the outside end of the zipper to the other outside end of the zipper. Now our gusset is attached to our ends. We can move on to the next steps. We're almost done. I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. All right, so now we need to attach this whole piece to our lining. So we need to grab our lining. And there's some marks that you're going to use to line everything up. So first I'm going to remove all my clips that I have all around. Once you have all those clips, if you did like I did and added a bunch of clips, you're going to align the bottom ends, so the ends of the bottom with the base. So the ends, the bottom of the ends with the base. So the center of the ends are going with the center of the base on the side. And you're going to line those up, pin it in place on the lining, not the exterior, sorry. So the lining with the lining. So line up that center mark and pin. Then you're going to repeat that on the other side. So line up the center mark on the opposite side. With So the end, the center on the end is going to go with the center on the side of the base. Now, once you have those pinned, you're going to Flip the exterior gusset out of the way, and there's the center point on the zip, top gusset here. You're going to line it up with the center point on top of the lining main panel. So line up those center points. Clip it in place. Oops. <laughs> that didn't really work. Clip it in place. Repeat that for the other side, so just flip your exterior gusset, uh, zipper gusset, top gusset, sorry, out of the way. And clip the center marks together. And then what you're going to do is pin the rest of the way around, easing around those curves. And Tara does have you do this a little bit differently, so I'm just showing you how to do this. So what you would do is you would pin the straight edges, you'd sew the straight edge, sew that straight edge, then you'd go over here, you'd sew the top straight edge on this side and the top straight edge on this side. Then you'd clip your curves and you'd sew the curves all around. However, I'm going to do this in one sew all the way around, so that's why I'm pinning it a little bit differently. Because I like to sew this all in one time, all at one time. I just find it's a little bit faster for me, quicker and easier. But everybody's different. Definitely pin the long edge here, sew the straight edges, and then sew the curves if you feel that that's going to be easier for you. So I'm going to continue clipping this, and then I'm going to come back and we will sew the lining together. So I'll continue clipping all the way around. If you're just sewing the straight edges, you'll clip the straight edge of the bottom to end to the bottom or base panel. Sew that straight edge. Do that on the other side. Then the straight edge at the top of the main and the straight edge at this top of the main. Then you'll snip, then you'll uh, sew the curves. So I'm going to go clip the rest of the way and then I'll come back and we will continue with sewing the lining all the way around. Another thing I wanted to note, you have markings here that were made on your 
from your pattern piece that you transferred onto your lining and onto your exterior. That is where that seam here, so the seam where the gusset meets the end panel, that seam will line up right with that mark. So you wanna make sure that seam lines up on all four edges so that that way everything lines up nicely and neatly for you in this final construction. Okay, so as I said, you may have sewn the straight edges, all the straight edges first, and now you're working on your curves. I'm sewing it all in one step. So I'm going to start sewing at the bottom here. And I'm using my extension table because this is a pretty big bag and I'm not going to be able to hold this all up on my own. So you wanna sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. And another thing I forgot to do is check my bobbin because I don't really want to run out. Even if I do, it's not so bad, that's okay. There's enough in there for sewing quite a bit. So always check your bobbin. It's more important to check the bobbin when it comes to top stitching your bag so that you don't run out of bobbin at the final stages. If I run out, I'll put my bobbin back in and just back stitch over it. So I'm at a curve here. And what you can do to help with your curves is you can actually snip into the curves within your seam allowance and that'll help the fabrics open up so that they curve nicer because you have one that's a straight edge and one that's a curve. Another tip, I found it easier to pin with this unzipped. It was easier to pin those lining pieces. When you get to the part where the gusset meets the end, make sure you keep that seam allowance pressed down so that it's not up. You want to keep it pressed down towards the bottom. So all around all your curves. If you find it helpful, use a stiletto to help hold your fabrics. I just try to keep my, my clip on until I am right at the clip. It's more important for the curves, not so much on the straight edges, keeping those clips in place. You can do this the way Tara has us do it in the pattern. I just prefer this way. I find it's easier for me. Just keep checking that the fabrics underneath are flat. That's what you see me fiddling with. I'm just checking that all my fabrics are flat underneath. Even when you're just sewing the straight edges, do the same thing. Check to make sure everything's flat underneath. reload my bobbin and I'll come back and we will finish sewing this. All right, so I have my bobbin all fixed and I've sewn over my pocket here. So I'm going to unstitch this. I forgot to check to make sure that the pocket wasn't going to be up. So this is a lesson to make sure your pocket isn't 
in the way when you're sewing. Easy fix, just unpick those stitches, take the pocket out, and then re-sew over that area that you unpicked. So, starting just before it, I'm going to back stitch right on top of those previous stitches. That'll help lock in the ones that I had to unpick and where I lost stitches from my bobbin running out. in the way of one of my thread guides and I don't want it to break. I'm just moving that pocket out of the way because it was creeping over to this side now. Previously, make sure everything's flat. It's going to feel a bit weird when you get to this gathered pocket area because the gathered pocket is gathered, so it's going to feel like at the top here when you stitch over it where that seam is. But it's not flat, but it is. Just make sure everything underneath and on top is nice and flat so that you don't have any puckers or anything. as I go to the other areas that don't have enough clips. And anytime you can move anything out of the way of your sewing, move it out of the way so that you don't have any issues. way around. See, it takes us a little bit longer this way, I think, but I get it all done at once. Or maybe it takes the same amount of time, you're just doing it a different way. and rotating. Oops. Again, I'm at that seam. I want to make sure it stays pressed down.
making sure the pocket didn't get caught up in any seams again. <clears throat> But it's on this side now, which I won't be going back near that side because it's going to end over here. So I just got to finish going around two more curves. <coughs> this is a very big workout. My arms are going to be sore later, but it is worth it. There you go. I have sewn the lining with one sew all the way around. Just unzipping these. So you can see my lining is all sewn to my bag. Easy peasy. Now I'm just going to check to make sure there's no puckers or anything else like that that I don't want. And also make sure this Pepsi zipper pocket didn't get caught in anything else or none of my other seams got caught with anything. If there is any puckers, you can easily unpick those seams and fix them. Now we're going to zip this up a little bit again, and we're going to repeat that whole thing for the exterior. And I'm actually going to tuck this piece down in through the zipper pocket here. So now we need the exterior. And we're doing the same thing, pinning, and you can do the same thing as in the instructions, pin the short edge, then you'll sew this short edge, so the end, so the end of the gusset, so the end piece with this pocket, goes centered on the base, and then you pin this all, and then you'll sew this straight edge, you'll repeat for the other end and the base, and then you'll do your top gussets, the straight edges, the straight edges here and then you'll sew all your curves so you sew all your straight edges and then all your curves or you can be like me and pin it all the way around and then sew all the way around now this part here might get a little bit tricky up around your d-ring because the d-ring is there so it might get a little bit tricky tara does recommend using a zipper foot to get to that part to make it a little bit easier if you're feeling that your presser foot is going to be too big, a zipper foot is definitely helpful anytime you feel like your presser foot that you would normally use is going to be too big. A zipper foot is very helpful for that. So I'm just going to pull this lining inside here so I can see what I'm doing. I guess I can't because, oh, all right. So the lining can't be pulled in, so now we're going to have an assembled lining that we're going to be taking care of at the same time. So you're going to have to be very careful when sewing the lining, or the exterior, that your lining doesn't get caught under your stitches. Another thing you want to do again is this seam goes with the seam here where you have the final construction, so that seam We'll go with the final construction. And then your strap, sorry, your final construction seam, sorry, will go where the seam is here. So your seam where your, not strap, your end, gus, end panel and your gusset meet will go where the 
final construction mark is. And it is a little bit hard to pin because there is that D-ring there, so I'm actually going to use a presser, a zipper foot as well for this section just to make sure I don't run into any problems when I'm sewing that. So again, final construction mark with the seam where your gusset and your end meet. That is where that will be pinned. So I'm going to continue pinning this, then I will come back and we will sew the rest of this bag up. So I'll do that and I'll be right back. All right, so I've got that exterior all pinned. Now it's time to sew it. And I'm going to do this in the same manner that I sewed the lining. So I'm going to switch to a zipper foot because I know when I get up near those D-rings, I'm going to need that extra space. I could have just backstitched and changed my foot, but this way here, I don't have to worry about that. So we're going to sew this using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And I found this gusset fit perfectly. So if you use all the right seam allowances, everything will fit together beautifully. gusset meets the end gusset, make sure that that's pressed down that seam. Make sure that everything is nice and flat underneath your presser foot as well. It's very important to not get puckers. set of hands when you're sewing a big bag like this. Just for when you're coming for a curve, you need to help hold it up. Mine hangs off the end of my table here. I know you can't really see what I'm doing because my bag is in the way, but I'm just sewing around using the seam allowance given in the pattern, making sure everything stays nice and flat, not removing clips till I need to. D-ring that I'm approaching. I'm going to be very careful here because I don't want to hit that D-ring. So just slow, so very slowly. And if you have to take a smaller seam allowance here, feel free to do that. If that means that you won't hit the D-ring, just veer over a little bit to not hit it. halfway through sewing the exterior. I wonder if anybody else is getting sweaty because I'm starting to roast.
definitely not a bag you're going to get made in a day. You want to take, you know, two days or even three days. So spend one day cutting, another day sewing, or another, and then an extra day sewing even. I cut this all out the day before, and then I spent the day sewing this. Well, it doesn't look like it because my videos are trimmed and paused where I need to. It did take a whole day to sew this. And by whole day, I mean starting early in the morning after my kids went for school and then stopping to have lunch and dinner and I'm still going and we've had dinner here. That's a typical day when I film a tutorial. That's typically what it takes me because I have to do a lot of stopping to take breaks because I can't sit for this long. So I do hope you all enjoy these tutorials that I film because they are a lot of work for me. Not that they're not a lot of work for everybody else, but they take a lot from me. tomorrow doing nothing, just recouping from doing this. table. And now I'm going to be approaching when I come around this final corner, not final corner, but second to last corner, I'm going to be approaching where that D-ring is. Again, I'm going to push it down. Where's the opening here? I found it better when the D-ring was facing down towards the bottom of the bag. If you have to, take a smaller seam allowance. Slightly smaller is not going to be a problem. But that zipper foot will help get nice and close without hitting it. We're on the final curve. My arms are getting sore. seams are caught. Oops. Now we're going to trim all our seam allowances. So you want to trim them down. I'm going to use pinking shears to trim them down. I'm not going to do this on camera because I don't feel that you need to see this, but you're going to trim all your seam allowances down as per the instructions in the pattern. And what I like to do before I do that as well is just take out the corners of each top here and just check it out. Make sure that there's no puckers or anything that I'm not really happy with. 
feel in the bottom here, make sure there's nothing that you're not, you know, not happy with, if you feel any puckers or anything. Know that there is a seam there, so you'll have seams. So that's just what I like to do before I go ahead and trim my seams, because if you have to take a new stitch, you don't have to worry about um, having seam allowances that you've trimmed down. So I can see here, this corner looks good. And this one looks good. So I'm going to go and trim all my seam allowances down and then I'll come back and we will continue on with finishing the bag because we are almost done. There's just a few more steps we need to do, but we're almost done. So I'm going to go trim my seam allowances, come back and we will continue on. All right, so I've trimmed all my, my uh, seam allowances. Now you need to take this part where the gusset meets the main and you need to line up the lining with the exterior. And we're going to clip this all the way across that straight edge. And then what we're going to do is we're going to sew this at the top. We're going to base them together. Don't go past where the seam allowance is because you don't want to get into those stitches because that'll change how it looks on the out the outside when you turn the bag right side out because you've kept a nice accurate seam allowance there. So just stitch just a small seam allowance. And this doing this prevents the lining from falling into the bag. Another tip, take the seams where the side, or the, oops, I just broke a clip, where the gusset meets the end, and we're going to clip there just a little bit, just down a little bit, and we're going to sew there as well. Now we're going to wait to sew this once the other piece is all done, so we'll sew the top parts where the gusset is. And the reason for this, why I'm doing this, is where that gathered pocket, that helps prevent the gathered pocket from pulling the lining in, so now you're tacking it to the side here, to the exterior. So now it won't pull it in on the inside of the bag. You'll have your gusset attached, that part of the gusset attached to the exterior of the bag. And then that elastic won't want to pull in that gathered pocket because it's gonna wanna pull because it's gathered. This will prevent it from pulling in too far. And you won't get that part of your lining pulling in as well. And this is just a little extra step. So I'm going to finish pinning that. I'm going to sew the top part first so I can get that done. And I'm going to switch back to my other foot so I have more space so that I'm not falling off the edge of the fabric. I just find I have more control with this foot. I'm just sewing that top edge, not past that original stitch line. It's basted in place. If some of it came out because we did clip this a little bit smaller, or I used pinking shears and it's the seam went a bit smaller there. Pull back, pull it back. There we go. We've got that stitched in place. Now I'm going to do the other side, do the exact same thing on this side. Now I'm actually 
actually do this on lots of different bags where the lining the, the lining could fall into the bag. I'll go ahead and do this. Even if the designer doesn't say to, I'll do it. Just as an extra step to make sure that everything stays together and doesn't fall into the bag. And I'm just making sure it caught everything everywhere and it appears it has. where this side is. Now it's going to be a little bit hard to do it, but you can see I've clipped it right here. So where those two seams are, so where the gusset meets the end, that's where you're clipping and you're sewing underneath where that gusset meets the end. It's just because you want that gathered pocket not to pull the sides of your bag of the lining in. So we're just stitching it there the same way we just did there up at the top here. You're just basting those two together and it doesn't have to be very far, just enough to hold it there in place. that'll just hold that side pocket, the gathered pocket area from, from pushing in. So I'm going to do that on the other side. And then I'm going to repeat it for this side as well of the bag. And be careful when you're near where those D rings are again, because you don't want to hit those. And again, you don't need to go very far, just enough just to help clip it and oops, clip it and hold it in place. going to be a little bit hard because like I said you've got the top part of the bag all pinned together and sewn together. On to the next side. You're really going to have to pull now because now you've got that side over there clipped. Now we're really going to have to pull these fabrics over. And again, this is just to prevent the top of the gather pocket, pocket from pulling in the sides of the lining. We will want to pull it in. where it is right here. This is an extra step, not in the pattern, but I like to give little tips and tricks and little extras when I'm doing a tutorial. So this is one of my little extras. Now we can turn our bag right side out through that zipper pocket opening. I'm going to stand for this because I find it is sometimes easier for me to just stand. Whoops. And I'm going to start by pushing the exterior out.
use it this way. I hope it's this way. Yeah. Push out your corners or your, all your curves. Including up here. I know it's going to be a little bit harder to do because we stitched those edges together. But you can just kind of reach your hand in and push it. So obviously this needs a really good press, but that's how it's looking. That's the back where the luggage sleeve is, and that's the front. It's such a pretty bag. I love the little cargo pocket on the front. If you take an airplane, you could put your, pa your passes there, or maybe even slip your phone into there. Find any threads that are sticking out from your seams, go ahead and remove them. Definitely needs a really good pressing. So I'll spend some time pressing this after. I love the side pockets too. I just love this whole bag. There's nothing about this bag I don't like. So now that we have that done, now it's time to attach our handles. So what you're going to do is take one of the handles and there's a measurement in the pattern for how far you're going to fold them. So you're going to fold them over and I'm just going to... I've got my rulers here off camera. So I'm just going to clip it in place Make sure it's not twisted. Clip it in place. Repeat that for the other side. Clip that one in place. Make sure it's not twisted, clip it in place, and this is where you have the option to use rivets or you can sew. I'm going to sew it and then I'm going to add rivets off camera because that's not really important for you to watch. So I'm going to sew this, and this is what was mentioned earlier as a trick or a tip from Tara about having um, attached the handle before you did all the construction of the bag because you're maneuvering a lot of this bag underneath your presser foot or on your table. So I just put my extension table on. I haven't pressed my bag yet so I'm not super concerned about squishing it up right now. So there's one handle, now I'm going to do the other handle, and then I'll repeat that for the other side of the bag. Okay. 
And these are stitches you will see. needs a really good pressing. So now I'm just clipping all my threads and then I'm going to go off camera and install my rivets because again you don't need to see that and if you have Chicago screws you can use Chicago screws if you prefer or you can also sew a box so sew up as close as you can to the hardware and then sew an X in that box and that'll help secure the handles as well. I like to do the stitching when it's handles like this and the rivets, it just adds extra security because this could have a lot of weight in it and that'll make sure that everything is extra secure and safe and you won't have any issues with your handles later. So that's how it's looking so far, I know it's all squished up but that's how it's looking so far so I'm going to go and attach my rivets and then I'll come back and we will finish up. Now I had skipped a step and I always do that on purpose, it's closing up the opening in the zipper pocket and the reason why I leave that is just in case I find anything that I don't like, like I find puckers or something, I can turn the bag back right side out and fix them. So I always leave this right till the end including when my handles are attached and as you can see I attached the handles and I used rivets. So now that I'm confident in how my bag is, I'm happy with how it looks. I'm going to turn the zipper pocket so the bottom edges are folded under and you could take this to your iron and give it a press. I'm just going to use some clips this is probably the biggest bag I filmed the tutorial for to date I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial So once we get that pocket turned under, we will then stitch that closed with the seam allowance given in the pattern. And if you're choosing to do the binding method, there are instructions for the binding method given in the pattern, so you'll want to refer to that if you're choosing to do that. So I'm just going to stitch this close. push the pocket back into the zipper pocket so that it is where it belongs. Now all that's needed to be done is giving it a press. I won't do that on camera because that's not something you need to be seeing. So I'm just going to zip this up. And I'm just going to kind of press this out with my hand so you can see how it looks. We just need to clip our strap to it, our shoulder strap or a crossbody strap, however you want to wear it. So you'll just clip this to it. There you have it, your Michael 
Traveler is all complete. I'm just going to move the camera a little bit. Your Michael Traveler is all complete. I hope you enjoyed sewing along with me and maybe picked up some tips and tricks along the way. When you post on social media, don't forget to use the hashtags that are below in the description of the video. And don't forget to also tag OO Creations so that Tara can see all your beautiful Michael Traveler bags that you have completed. And don't forget to so share it in social on social media as well and tag Tara so that she can see it. And because this is a Bag of the Month bag, don't forget to tag Bag of the Month and also share it in the Bag of the Month community on Facebook and in the OO Creations uh, Facebook page as well, our Facebook group as well, which I'll have that all linked below in the description for you to share these there. So again, I hope you enjoyed sewing along with me. I'm looking forward to seeing all your beautiful Michael Traveler bags that you post on social media. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Thanks for sewing along. Bye.